Ben böyle bir yerde. Yes, I'm around. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Lee. So, I should be telling about that. Huh? Good morning, Mr. Lee. Hello. Hello, Justice. Uh, yeah, Mr. Lee, are, are you ready for us now? Yes, yeah, sure. Sure, okay. Yes, um, we wanted to find out. Once again, thank you for making time, even though we just contacted you a few hours ago and you were willing to be with us, though the notice was very short. But most importantly, we're going to have more co conversation after the forum. We, we want you to share with us um, the experience, how you started the Tunisian Startup Act. And then you end with advice. How best can the Ghanaian stakeholders come together and, and, and push for the same act? Thank you very much, Justice. Uh, let me uh, turn on my camera. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks uh, for uh, inviting me for, uh, for this uh, uh, web conference. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, Justice, we have been in this uh, endeavor of um, creating and uh, putting in place a legal framework for startups in Tunisia since uh, February 2016. That was the, uh, uh, the first date of the task force uh, first meeting. Uh, it was initiated uh, by, uh, by the then Minister of ICT, who actually convened uh, representatives of the public sector, uh, private uh, sector, and uh, civil society, all uh, working uh, uh, on the startup scene or in the startup scene, and ask them to uh, meet uh, as six months uh, set of recommendations, right? And uh, the, the group was uh, composed of about uh, 70 people and we were dispatched into working groups. So one group in uh, finance, one other group in uh, entrepreneurial education, one other group in public policies, uh, uh, another one in fundraising, etc., etc. So we, we were more than 10 groups. And uh, by the end of the six months, we produced around 120 recommendations. Now, that, that was the first, I would say, era or the first period of time. Now, these 120 recommendations were, uh, were ranging from the most realistic to the most unrealistic, right? Uh, one of the most unrealistic one would be to um, offer funding for any, every startup uh, incorporated in the country. Another recommendation is a full convertibility of the Tunisian currency. Uh, for your information, the Tunisian currency is not 100% convertible. It means Tunisians cannot buy things on the internet on websites that are not uh, labeled in Tunisian currency. Challenges that we have is the uh, ability to buy from international websites. Now, as I told you, I mean, many, many recommend recommendations that were ranging from the most unrealistic to the most realistic. And then uh, something else that you should know about the reality in Tunisia is that since we had the revolution in 2011, we have been through a lot of political instability. And this political instability resulted in changes in government uh, Uh, this means that it's very hard, very hard, and very challenging to do anything that is top-down, because there is no top, right? The top is changing every now and then. So the only way for us to push for reforms is to do it uh, in, in a bottom-up approach, right? So what happened is the then minister started something. Six months later, he was, uh, he, he was dismissed from his uh, functions. Now we have to start all over again. So what, what, what happened is, I don't know, if, this is very specific to Tunisia, by the way. Huh? Then I will, I will go through the measures. An ecosystem is to, uh, uh, to circulate a petition 
among all the ecosystem, but also meeting the new government and tell them we only want political continuity in this country or state continuity. We want what the endeavors and the efforts that were started by the old government to, to be sustained in the new one. And we are here to help the new minister, pro bono, of course, free of charge, right? So we restructured the task force and the minister appointed somehow a, a chief of mission on the task force and we were a team of four, right? So I'm gonna share with you. Let me check. Yeah. So I'll share my screen to uh, uh, share with you what was the, uh, I mean, based on 120 recommendations, our work was first to filter uh, the, the, the most urgent, most feasible recommendations. And I will show you what, how, was, how was it done. Okay. Uh, can you share? Uh, sharing the screen because it's deactivated from your end. Okay, so let me let me let you. Okay, try again. You can share now. Yeah. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. We can see. Can Can everyone see? Sure, we can see. I hope everybody can see the screen now. Yes. Good. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, since we're not, we're not that many, I think we can also go through a, a quick introduction so that we can interact because I think the idea sure, is also sure, to sure, uh, sure, 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 see sure. as many feedback and yeah. Great, great. So I'll do that. I'll do that. So Sheriff, start for me. Your mic, your mic, please. Yes, thank you. Yeah. My name is Sharif, I'm CEO of Ghana Chamber of Young Entrepreneurs. The Chamber of Young Entrepreneurs is more or less the National Association of Young Entrepreneurs in Ghana. Okay, great. Nice to meet you. Albert. Okay, um, my name is Albert Derek Yaki. I'm the Executive Director, Center for International Maritime Affairs. It's a policy think tank, mainly for the maritime and the trade industry. I'm also right. a business development director at the Logical Maritime Services, a shipping company. Thank you. Farouk. Farouk, are you with us? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Farouk Kailan. I'm founder and CEO of Premium African Holdings. We are an African-focused investment company where we operate in Ghana, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. I'm also Secretary General of Global Chamber of Business Leaders. Great to be here. Nice big, to meet big you, Big man, big man. Josiah. Hi, um, my name is Josiah. Um, I'm the CEO of iSpace, um, an innovation hub in Accra, and also currently the chairman for Ghana Hubs Network, which is uh, a body of currently 38 um, hubs across um, Ghana, and we have 14 more to um, join our membership in about two weeks. So, yeah, that's what I do, and happy to be here. Great, 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 great. Courage, can we hear you? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, uh, my name is Courage Asabagna. Uh, I'm a legal consultant and a tax expert and a lecturer at the University of Ghana School of Law. Great, great, thank you. Um, Delali Kotoka, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, my name is Delali Kotoka, um, founder and executive director of Sacrifice. We are into travel and hospitality services in Ghana and looking forward to expanding into Africa. So. All right, thank you. Richard Williams. Can we hear you, Richard, your mic? Okay, William Beckel. William. Okay. You can unmute them yourself. Yeah, but it looks like they're, 
Okay, okay. William, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Yeah, kindly introduce yourself. Yes, my name is William Nanaya Obeko. I'm based in Accra, Ghana. We are into online digital communications. And I happen to be the chief editor for modernghana.com, Ghana's premium. What I do. I'm into digital media consultancy as well. Great. I'm very happy. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks. Daniel Nuga. Hi. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So my name is Daniel Nuga and I, I live in Ghana and work here. I'm the managing director of Dan Project Enterprise. Uh, we are fairly new. It's a roofing, building and construction company. But currently our strength is with roofing. And that's what we do. I'm happy to be here. And I hope that a lot of good stuff will proceed out of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Williams, Richard Williams, are you, are you back? Richard Williams, are you on? Okay. Mr. Ali, kindly proceed. Yeah. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, 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 excuse my English, of course, uh, I would, I'll do my best. That's fine. Uh, <clears throat> so as I said, the idea, <clears throat> the idea was when we took over the second part with the new minister is to filter the 120 recommendations and see uh, how to proceed actually. Um, so I'm gonna go through actually the initial uh, phases of the, of the work. First, we had to actually see and benchmark uh, the situation in, in Tunisia. Uh, okay. Actually, I mean, to, to, to go back to the essence, why are we working on entrepreneurship and why are we working on the Startup Act? Uh, for three things. One is to create wealth, to create wealth. Tunisia, uh, after the revolution, we uh, actually, we, we have been and we are still in a stagnation of our GDP. We are not creating wealth. Number two is to create jobs. One of the uh, one of the um, triggers of the revolution was the lack of economic opportunities for our youth. Three is, is to give hope. And uh, I think it's a common, uh, a common factor between, uh, between Tunisia and Ghana. You know, in, 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 in 10 years, more than, more than 20,000 young Tunisians actually crossed the Mediterranean illegally because they were lacking economic opportunities and of course, because they are lacking hope. So uh, this is for us the three main triggers of the, of the Startup Act. And of course, every, for every trigger, we try to analyze uh, uh, what are the interesting, uh, the interesting uh, benchmark. For your information, Skype in Estonia. Estonia is a, is a country of 1.6 million people, the whole country, which is almost a half Skype, Skype was founded there, and in 2005, it was sold to eBay for 2.6 billion. And Skype had an enormous impact on, on the startup ecosystem in Estonia. And today, Estonia has the highest unicorn. It means startups uh, which valuation uh, uh, exceed, exceeds $1 billion. Estonia has the highest uh, uh, unicorn per capita in the world. And other, other benchmark were, were taken into consideration. As I told you, Estonia is one of them. Jordan as a country, which is part of the Middle East and, uh, and North Africa uh, region. Uh, 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 back in 2000, they had their first major acquisition from Yahoo for 160 million. Uh, uh, also, uh, soup.com has been sold to uh, to uh, Amazon for uh, almost $600 million. So Jordan is a country we considered in our benchmark. And by benchmark, it means get, getting, it, getting in touch with the people. For Estonia, we got in touch with the Skype team. We got in touch with their chief innovation officer at the government. For Jordan, same thing. For Chile, we analyzed how cities and government can, can initiate their own programs. And we analyzed how 
the municipality of Santiago de Chile, their capital city, actually attracted thousands of entrepreneurs from across the world to come to Chile and start their own business there. And of course, France, because as you may know, uh, France uh, is, is, is our uh, uh, country of reference for uh, Francophonic Africa. Um, we also analyze what, uh, what are our strengths, right? Uh, our, our strength is uh, our youth and our education. Uh, we have uh, highly talented, highly educated youth. We have a very strong diaspora, and I think it's the same thing from Ghana, for Ghana. We, almost 15% of Tunisians live abroad, right? We have tech-savvy youth. I think they are mostly well-connected to the internet, well-equipped with smartphones, etc. They know uh, they know how to use technology. Since we are uh, very close to Europe, etc., we are somehow open to the world, and we are a very small country compared to our neighbors, etc. I mean, we are our neighbors are Algeria, the biggest country in Africa, and Libya, which is also a big country. Uh, so uh, our small market makes uh, makes entrepreneurs think big and international since day one. However, these are the strengths. However, we have uh, we have a very low uh, 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 entrepreneurship in, uh, entrepreneurship uh, intention in the country. Only two percent of our population is engaged in entrepreneurial activity compared to the countries that I mentioned. It's four percent double in Malaysia, and it's seven times the figure in Chile, uh, five times the figure in Brazil, and in Estonia six times the figure. So we have also to increase the entrepreneurial activity in the country. So it's not simply to enact or to, uh, uh, to uh, vote a law. The idea is also to create a huge wave, right? And that wave would have, uh, would have impact on the population, on the youth, and also on the different metrics used in different index indexes uh, that are impacting the ranking uh, of Tunisia in different rankings, you know, the Global Competitiveness Index, the Doing Business uh, Index, the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's the same thing in, in, in Ghana. The Startup Act isn't starting anything. The Startup Act is, is actually supporting what has already been started in the country. The startups emerged uh, way before the Startup Act, and the different plays emerged way before the start Startup Act. So the Startup Act is an enabler to an effort that started way before the Startup Act. And just to give you an idea about uh, uh, how dynamic or what are the dynamics within the ecosystem, I would invite you to check the website um, www.eot.tn. This is a website that uh, we're managing, actually, that is a mapping of the Tunisian startup ecosystem. And you can have an idea about before the startup acts, we had around 500 startups in the country employing more than a thousand people and generating around 20 million euros in revenue. And you can have access, as you see on the, on the right, you can have access to uh, 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 more than 20 infographics about the ecosystem that are detailing who are, uh, what is doing what, on who, or who's doing what, uh, the, the startups of the diaspora, the impact of the Startup Act, uh, the programs that are active in the country, etc. So what's the vision behind the, the, the Startup Act? I mean, I told you that there was already a dynamic ecosystem. I told you that uh, we benchmarked what are the good case practices globally, and we knew what are our strengths and what are our weaknesses? What are the bottlenecks in the country, right? So talking about the bottlenecks, we categorize the bottlenecks into three main categories. First one, as I mentioned in the entrepreneurial activity, we have a lot of psychological barriers. We have a lack of inspiration, lack of hope, lack of safety net. You know, safety net is very important. You know, the first, source of, of startup funding in France is the unemployment allowance, right? You know, French people, when they get into uh, unemployment, they receive uh, some sort of an allowance from the government, right? Uh, to help them find a new job. That allowance is the first source of funding of startups in France. 
these, uh, this allowed a lot of French people to actually move up and step up and start a business. Uh, and the lack of safety net uh, has a direct impact on the financial fi of the financials of the of the of the individuals. If by any chance they uh, they fail in their businesses, which is ninety percent of the cases, right? So that's the first category. The second category of bottlenecks is the inadequate support for to startups, whether on the support organizations like incubators, accelerators, et cetera, or in the finance or, or in the in the financing offer, right? We don't have enough uh, early stage or seed seed stage uh, uh, funds uh, in the country. We have more than less than less than five uh, five funds for the 500 startups that I mentioned, and finally. We don't have a specific legal framework for startups, knowing that the current legal framework for SMEs is already very crippling for businesses. As I told you, we don't have the, uh, the convertibility of the dinar. We are, not, uh, we are not pushing our companies to be competitive outside of the country. We have some, uh, 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 some high taxation on companies, etc. So these are the three main bottlenecks identified in the, in the ecosystem. So out of, out of the, 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 the in-depth analysis of the bottlenecks, of the benchmark, of the strengths and weaknesses, we launched as a task force, the task force name is Startup Tunisia, by the way, we, we launched actually four main cons big construction uh, endeavors, right? The first one is the Startup Act. The second one is a fund of funds. And I know in Ghana, I think there was an initiative of a fund of fund of $30 million. I don't know what happened to that initiative. Number three is the talent pool. And number four is the inclusiveness. It means that what happens in the city center or in the, in the capital city should also be inclusive to the, rest, to the rest of the country, right? And uh, we tackled these initiatives one by one chronologically. So we started with the Startup Act. We finished with the Startup Act back in 2018. We launched the first wave of labelization in 2019. Now we are working on the Fund of Fund. We just closed the first round at $75 million uh, to actually create uh, 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 around 10 to 15 child funds. Uh, as I told you, the idea is to increase the number of funds that are serving startups from five to 20. Uh, once we finish with the fund of fund, we're gonna move to the talent pool. Of course, there are existing uh, uh, initiatives from the public, from the private, and from the civil society in training youth for coding and, and, and computer science, etc but we want an inclusive national initiative that would increase that number. For your information, in that regard, Tunisia is producing as much coders as Germany, right? Tunisia is at 11 million people, Germany is 80 million people. We're producing more engineers than Morocco. Morocco is 40 million people. Yet we still think that there is, uh, we have to thrive for excellency in order to increase that number and produce more talent in order to, to, uh, to uh, encourage these talents to start businesses, but also encourage this talent to join startups and create uh, uh, and, and add value. <coughs> so moving, moving to, the, to the different measures, as I told you, the idea was to take the 120 measures that were produced by the task force, the original task force, and reduce that number, make it more feasible, uh, more realistic, and of course more digestible for the for the for the people. Uh, when you when we did the benchmark of current laws, the SME Act, for instance, the Small Business Act, is a set of I don't know probably 200 pages, right? Uh, it's it's for 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 the common human being. There is no way you can spend like I don't know two or three days, uh, and you are an entrepreneur, you, you're not gonna read that 200 pages. Probably a lawmaker 
uh, a lawyer would do that, right? So we wanted this Startup Act to be as much dig digest as possible. So we made it in four pages and 20 articles. Uh, and that would take someone 15 minutes to, to read it entirely. And that was the purpose, to make it as digest as possible. So the first thing that we went through is quite tricky because there was no definitive agreed upon definition of what's a startup, right? By law, by law. Of course, there are in the literature a lot of nice definitions of startups, uh, an entity that is seeking its own business model, right? That's a very inspiring definition. But these definitions you cannot, and I, I heard that we have here in the audience, some, uh, some lawyers and some um, uh, people who, who, who know better than me how a legal definition is much more, has, has to be much more precise than any nice article definition, right? So we, we divided that definition in two parts. One objective, uh, uh, three objective criteria and two subjective criteria on how to define a startup, right? So first, it has to be uh, less than eight years of, exp of existence, right? So the startup has to have less than eight years of existence. The second, the annual revenue and the total balance sheet has to be less than 5 million euros. That's the 15 million dinars, right? Or the workforce less than 100 employees, right? And three, it has to have an independent capital structure. The two thirds of its capital has to be owned by individual private equity funds of foreign startups. This is to avoid having existing businesses converting to startup to take the advantage of the Startup Act, right? So these are the three objective criteria uh, which, which are treated and processed automatically. So we have our own platform through which the startups are applying and the platform is analyzing automatically these three criteria. The two remaining criteria are subjective. One is innovation, two is scalability, right? And these, these two last criteria are whether judged by the market, if the startup succeeds into raising funds from a seed stage fund, it means that it verifies automatically the innovation and the scalability, or because there are no enough funds for now, will they go through college uh, the college, which is uh, a team of uh, nine uh, people, representatives of the private sector, the public sector, and independent experts to actually review the applications and approve the label of the startups. Myself being the expert, the independent expert in, the, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this team, right? So it's, it's, uh, we have a president and uh, eight, eight other, uh, eight other uh, members. And we have been appointed by the chief of government. Now, this is for the definitions, right? These are the two first articles, very straightforward for the, uh, for the definition. The second set of laws are more related to inspiration and how to push people to become entrepreneurs. Uh, one, if you work, in a company, uh, you can leave, have a startup leave, right? Which is a one year leave, which is expendable one, for once for one year, where you can leave your job and start a startup and you have a guarantee to get back your job if you fail in these two years, right? Number two, which is the startup allowance or the startup stipend, which is a living allowance granted for up to three co-founders of the startup at its first year of existence. And this allowance is actually based on the average of your last 12 paying, uh, paying uh, notices, right? So you take the, your average salary for the last 12 months and you take it, the government give, it, give, give you that money for one year so that you can have that safety net that I, that I mentioned earlier. Number three is you have access to the best employment programs that are granted for offshore companies to actually recruit the best talent for your startups. And number four, the government takes in charge your patenting 
when you have a patent, a patent to register internationally, not nationally, internationally, which is one of the most expensive uh, 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 measure that we have in the Startup Act. That one is one of the most expensive. This is for the inspiration. This is to push people to start businesses. Now, the, second, the third set is to actually to push entrepreneurs to further develop and further internationalize or, or fail or better fail as, as, as a company. The first is you don't deal with the administration whatsoever. We have a platform and we digitalize it all along. And you can go to startupact.tn. You will find a public portal for everyone, but also an admin uh, section for label as startups. Number two is we created a new financial instruments. Uh, uh, we facilitated the, the, uh, the possibility for startups to issue um, safe and bonds uh, and convertible notes, etc. Uh, of course, total exemption from, uh, for the, from the corporate tax for the duration of the labelization up to eight years and no social uh, security charges anymore. The government takes that in, 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 in charge. Uh, of course, the investors are, all, are also 100% tax exempt. Uh, their capital gain is also uh, tax exempt. Um, what else? Yes, and for the guarantee fund and the, and the fund of fund, as I mentioned, this is something that we are working on right now. Of course, as I, as, as, as I told you earlier, uh, there is no uh, possibility for, um, uh, for uh, Tunisian companies to have access to uh, foreign capital. Uh, we allowed startups to uh, 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 freely manage up to $40,000 uh, 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 per year in, in foreign currency. Um, without without uh, uh, generating any foreign currency. If the startups generate foreign currency, they can manage it freely. There is no ceiling, there is no cap for that. But if the startups is only local for a certain time, they can still have access to foreign capital uh, up to uh, $40,000 per year. Of course, they have a special account in all the commercial banks which is called the startup account, right? Uh, they don't have, they are exempt for any kind of certification or approval or technical inspection on imports. And they have uh, the status of authorized economic operator uh, as per the customs code, which means that startups, they don't go through the customs. The customs, if they want to control, they have to come to the startup and not the other way around, right? So these are the 20 measures very briefly explained. Uh, of course, we organize every now and then uh, community events where we invite people, whether in the capital city or in the interior of the country to actually further explain that, convince people, educate people, vulgarize all these, uh, all these uh, definitions. And uh, I, don't, I don't know, I'm, 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 if you have any question, I'm, I'm, I'm here to answer. Mr. Thank you very much. And as we said, um, we're gonna have copies of these documents. So we will serve all the speakers and participants a copy, right? But for now, um, do you have anyone having some issue or some questions, some clarity uh, so that he can iron it quickly? Hello, if you want to talk, unmute yourself. If you want to talk, unmute yourself. Uh, Justice, yeah. can I have the... Yeah, yeah. yeah Ali, yes. Ali, thank you very much for such a comprehensive you know, presentation. But I also want to understand, was there a private sector participation? The government worked with, you know, closely with the private sector you know, to develop this startup act. And what was their contribution? 
So <clears throat> all the all the task forces are private sector uh, private sector people. I am myself a private sector uh, entity. Uh, what what we uh, what we committed to is uh, not to get paid by the government and give as much time as needed in order to uh, to uh, pursue that endeavor and succeed into voting the law. As I told you, we started in February 2016. The law was voted in April 2018. And we took one year to actually make that law operational. And the first wave of label as startups started in April 2019, actually. And now, after uh, we just finished this morning, our uh, college, college des startups, which is the entity that offers the label, we just finished our retreat. And so far, we have 327 startups that received the label uh, after 17 months of operations. Mm. Mm. But yeah. mostly, we are mostly private sector people uh, yeah. to answer. Yeah. yeah. So far, it's just a it's just a collaborative effort of private sector um, who have decided to do it for free, and definitely they are doing it in collaboration with government. But when you look and at actually, we, we, we had challenges, Justice, uh, to finish with that. Okay. We started having challenges when money was in the middle. Okay. You know, exactly. people yes. getting, uh, why you didn't invite me, why you should, and you, etc. We started having issues, not, not, I would say, I would say challenges, not issues. I mean, we, we continued the work, etc. But the, the work was much smoother when money was not in the middle. Mm. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Right. So My this, question yeah. was because uh, a lot of times when private sector people are called to work with government, there are instances where, you know, private sector is expecting government, you know, to make available some funding for them. So I see that um, volunteering is, is, is a big part of the conversation. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sure. All right, so Justice, can I also come in? Yeah, you can come in, you can come in. Yeah, Ali, thank, thanks very much for that presentation and uh, kudos to Tunisia. I think you have set the pace for Africa and we are all following. Um, well, I can also see that you, your, your side had a very great uh, support from the government, uh, unlike what we face here in Ghana, but hopefully we, are, we believe that things will work out. But I want to ask one very important question. Um, your startup labeling, the institution that is responsible for labeling startups or giving the label to startups, is it um, working directly with the government or is an independent body that uh, is a standalone that a startup applies and uh, if, as they've gone through all the criteria, then you are giving the label. I want to know how that um, institution is playing. Is it independent or works with the government? So it's... it's, it's uh... Uh, it's a very uh, unique setup because we, we thought thoroughly about that. If we, if we would have made it part of the government or as a governmental agency, that would be a, a big failure because we, we saw other governmental agencies. They are crippled, they are bureaucratic, they are uh, uh, slow, uh, etc. And oh. you cannot simply give that power to a private sector entity. That's too much power. Right? right, a lot of money, right. a lot of interest in between. So we, right. had, to, we had to think about a unique uh, setup. And that unique setup, if you, if, you, if you remember, I mentioned the fund of fund. So the, the right. fund of fund is, is a quite interesting uh, uh, setup because it's an investment fund, right? And as an investment fund, it, it's, it's perceiving management fees, right? So it's, right. it's a public investment fund that is, the, the public is, is a shareholder, but the management is done in, in a pri private sector fashion. Okay. So oh. the salaries are not the salaries mm -hmm. of the public sector, which, which are very low. However, we are accountable, right, to shareholders that mm -hmm. are public sector companies. Mm -hmm. uh, these public sectors company are, are um, CDC, which is the investment arm of the government, the Tunisia Telecom, which is the public telco operator. We have other private ones, but we have a public one. And this gives us a very nice hybrid, uh, I would say, uh, setup, right? Mm -hmm. uh, our role as college 
we are again a pro bono uh, 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 we are working on a pro bono uh, basis and mm -hmm. we want this to continue as such uh, we decided that it has to be on a volunteer basis even though it takes a lot of time to review the you know if we awarded 300 uh, to, to, to 27 uh, label, it means we received more than a thousand startups application. So you have to receive to review in 17 months, 1000 startup pitch with its uh, backup documents, financials, uh, pitch deck, uh, team composition, etc, etc, which takes a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, but we want it to be this way, so that it doesn't bring other interests than the interest of serving the country and pushing for the emergence of a true dynamic uh, startup ecosystem. Okay, Mr. Ali, let, let me ask this about a tax holiday. Um, have you been able to amend the, the main revenue act to accept the tax holiday for startups? So, so, so the idea of justice is very simple. We, we did, we did cause in Morocco, for instance, they are doing reforms. Their startup act is a set of reform on different other laws. We decided to do it otherwise. Okay. Uh, we wanted to create a new corridor to create exceptions. So the Startup Act is a set of exceptions in existing laws, right? So we didn't want to reform whatsoever. So what we said is the existing laws uh, uh, remain applicable to the 700,000 companies in the country. Mm. However, the ones that show the label that set of laws don't apply to them, a new set of law apply to them, which is the Startup Act. Mm. Right? Mm. Can you repeat that again? If, if, you, lose, if you lose that label, okay. you become an ordinary, uh, ordinary company and you are treated as an ordinary company with the, sa the same set of laws. Oh, I see. And so, you, need to, okay. you need to keep that label. You have to mm. show your scalability every year. Mm. You as the startup are, is growing, recruiting, mm. uh, fundraising. If you mm. don't show that every year, you, you lose your label. It's a very competitive, very competitive uh, uh, process. But why are you making it competitive? Why are you making it competitive? I mean, uh, uh, because because startups are uh, are in constant competition. It has to be competitive. We have to serve the fittest. Mm. Not to serve uh, uh, everyone. You have to serve the fittest. And it's a competition. You know, uh, when you look to, uh, I mean, take the most successful startup in Ghana. It's not successful because it's number one in Ghana. Because it's competing regionally or globally. Right? Yeah. It's a jungle. Globally, yeah. it's a jungle. Yeah. Uh, take any fintech. You, you are in a competition with uh, a platform in Silicon Valley, another one in Germany, another one in Egypt, another one in... Yeah. And we have to uh, uh, cultivate that competition aspect, right? Mm. So mm. if you are not competitive, you are you, we're not gonna let the company die, right? Mm. It's just that you're not you don't deserve the set of incentives that we are offering, right? Mm. So um, the the startup definition gives you a space of eight years. Beyond eight years you move out of these incentives or you move out of this legal cover. Yeah. So okay. you move to, I mean, you have three scenarios after the eight years. Mm -hmm. whether, whether you have to die. I mean, the company has to die, right? It's pointless. Okay. Number two, you become an ordinary SME, right? Okay. And number three, and this is what we are hoping for, is that you become a unicorn. You become a very successful startups. And we have, we have very few aspiring unicorns that we are supporting, right? And we're hoping mm. that they will become the unicorns before the eight years. Mm. Mm. Good, good. So in other words, if, if I'm in Tunisia right now and have a business and my business is 10 years old, but looking at the features of the definition of the startup, um, I can apply for the startup label, irrespective of the number of years since I registered my business. It has to be less than eight years. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
And by the way, you said you said when you, uh, uh, if I am in Tunisia, yeah. it's not only for Tunisians. Okay. So we had people uh, who got the label. They are French. We have Switzerland. We have Britain. We have Belgium. We have Ivory Coast. We have Morocco. We have Egypt. We have Algeria. These are all people from abroad who started their businesses to get the incentives that we offer. Great, great, great. Any other question, Josiah? Courage. No, I don't have any questions. Um, it's just pretty much people having the questions, so we're just listening. Okay. Courage, do you have any, do you have any legal question you want to ask him? Yes, I'll just send in my, I'll just type in my comment okay. in relation to your question that you rightly asked in terms of whether we have to make reforms in relation to other laws. And uh, like he rightly explained, uh, we need not do that. Uh, because when it comes to the scope or the applicability of the act, what we have to do is that we make sure that any matter that relates or affects or borders on the Startup Act will apply in that context. So, for instance, if the law requires that you should pay 25%, we don't have to go and amend the Income Tax Act. All that we have to do is to make it clear that that 25% will not apply to startup acts, meaning that for startup acts, they will have a different uh, rate or percentage at which they will pay. So generally it has to do with when you have a general rule of application and you have a specific rule, the specific rule overrides the general rule of application. And that is the way we have to go around it than going to amend all other laws, which will take a very long time to do. Hmm. So we should have that in mind uh, also. Good, 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 good. Thank you. Sheriff, any other question? How about come in. Photo can I come in? Yeah, you can come in. Yeah. 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 Ali, um, I just want to know if there is um, any system put in place, sort of a tracker or a monitoring system that uh, helps this startup to, to be successful after the eight years. Or, and to make sure that they don't actually die off and then they become a, a, a great unicorn. Is there any system like that? Uh, very good question. Uh, um, so, so there are many things that I didn't mention just to make uh, the presentation, uh, uh, I would say, easy to, uh, to present. Um, so we have actually uh, four other measures, right, to support the ecosystem uh, producing uh, startups and high quality startups. Uh, first, the link that I showed, the EOT.TN link, you, you can see how many ecosystem players are they uh, uh, out there. Number two is we have, we have two, two measures called seal and, and uh, sale and deal. So sale is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, um, a grant, a, a non-reimbursable grant that we offer to each ecosystem player who is serving one of the priority that we set for the ecosystem. Say for 2020, our priority is anti-COVID-19 uh, anti um, programs. So, and you are an accelerator in Accra, right? And you start a, 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 a cohort of acceleration of startups serving anti-COVID uh, protection measures, etc. Right. So we give you a grant when you start that program. Next year, it would be uh, regional uh, inclusiveness. Right. So we're going to support the creation of programs in the interior of the country, and the year after. And this is decided every year, and we have a budget for that. Number two, it's called uh, deal. The first one is sale. Number two is deal. Deal is. Every accelerator, incubator, et cetera, that is producing labelized startups get 5,000 5, dinars per startup. You are an incubator and you have 20 startups, right? And your startups, 100% of your startups succeed into receiving the label, you get 100,000 dinars, which is 20,000 euros, right? 
So this, in order to push ecosystem players to work on quality, not quantity, right? And second, to serve the priority of the country or the priority of the startup ecosystem. Of course, these objectives are agreed upon not only by the government, by, mm. but by everyone around the table. Mm. Mm. Great, 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 great. Mr. Ali, we really appreciate that. As, as we said, uh, we need to hold more conversation and we are trying to bring you to Ghana to, to also help us I mean, push this agenda. Um, if there is no other question, Mr. Ali will advise us, leave some advice for us. Um, we are also waiting the just, same world. I just want to ask, hello. Yeah. Okay, so, um, Mr. Ali, I want to find out uh, what must your, be. Your earpiece is not helping you. Your earpiece is not helping you. So you can speak directly into your laptop mic. Speak directly into your laptop mic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so I want to go um, after the champion's course. No, we can't so, hear you. So, so we can can hear you. Can you type, can so you type, type your question? Type, type your question for us. Type your question for us. Type your question for us. Okay, type your question. Are you there? Any other question, please? So as you said, I mean, we have, we'll take the, we'll have the resource documents and then we'll share it. Nonetheless, we are also working hard. I mean, Sheriff also with the chamber has been in the space, uh, joining the efforts to, to, to advocate for the enactment of the Startup Act. And um, as well, we will do our best and bring the Tunisian College of Startups who are in charge of running the Startup Act or implementing it. Mr. Ali has been a great help. We just contacted him a few, few hours ago and he was willing to be with us. Though he gave us 30 minutes, we are spending even more than 30 minutes. We will have a lot of conversation. We will try and bring him to Ghana. I hope you'll be willing to come to Ghana, Mr. Ali. China, hopefully, sure. yes. So yes. Your, your, your advice, your advice before we leave, what is your advice for, for, for the stakeholders who are championing for the Ghana Startup Act? Uh, I, I don't think I don't think I'm. Uh, now we I, we can have advice in that regard. I think every ecosystem has its own uh, uh, has its own reality. Uh, I think the only uh, the only common reality uh, is to uh, work together. Mm. I think this is the common reality to all the I would say the uh, successful reforms and uh, uh, disrupting uh, reforms is to work together uh, and uh, our generation, and I would emphasize on that, our generation has uh, this mandate of uh, fighting against the old mindset. Mm. Um, and uh, if we fail at that, not only we fail our generation, but we fail the next generations as well. Great, great, great. That's, that's, that's a very relevant piece of advice then. So, Mr. Ali, we will, we will contact you behind scene and then we will talk after that. God bless you for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank right. you very much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Sure. All right. Hello. So now we can quickly have a, our discussion. But before we do that, I mean, there is a question you're going to see on your screen. Help us um, answer the question, then we take it from there. Right, so give me some 30 seconds, you'll see it. Okay, so I hope everybody can see the question. Now you can unmute your mic. If you want to talk, unmute your mic. If you want to talk, unmute. When you finish talking, you, you, you mute it. So let's quickly answer it. Justice. Yes. The second question. Yes. I don't know whether I'm jumping the gun, but the second question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, talk. Yes. Uh, to, 
to a certain extent, I do agree. Mm. To a large extent, I'm a bit uh, in disagreement. <laughs> so now let's, let's, let's finish. Let's things. finish. Courage. Let's everybody answer the question. Okay, we will share the result, and then we we'll call you to make yes. comments on it. We will call you to make comments. Okay. I want everybody to answer the question. We will okay. share the result and stuff. So, um, only one person. Can, can the rest do it quickly, please? We have some few seconds to do that. All right. We are still waiting for the rest to answer the question, please. Okay, eleven. Maybe six more. Six people have won. Then maybe six people more. All right. So, um, so when we're done, when we share the result, courage, you make your submission. Sharif, you make your submission. Um, Josiah, you make you make your submission. Then we follow after Josiah, we follow with the with the rest of the the participant as well. You want me? You want me to make my submission on? No, you'll be the third person to make your submission. So, Karen, yeah. you do first your submission in terms of. The discussion we, we are having. I mean, we've listened to the perspective of the Tunisians that have act. Um, right. We are also championing the same thing. Uh, what is the way forward? We're going to share the results of the questions we ask. If you want to make comments on the, the results, you can do that. If you okay. also, is after that, I'm listening, please. Second, because I need to jump off. I have a call at one o'clock. Sure, sure. So you can, if, if it's time, you can leave and join the next batch, the second batch. Okay. All right, I think we're done. Right, let me two people. So let me share the result. Courage, you can make your statement. Yes. Uh, uh, in relation to the second question, uh, there's uh, yes, sister, uh, you display the results, or you are waiting for the rest uh, of it's like with three people. I don't know whether I should still display it or, yeah, I think uh, it's done, it's done, it's done. Yeah, I think it's done. The three yeah. are just, yeah, so let me share the result. The three are not, yeah. so the three belongs to the affair desktop. So, okay, so I hope you've seen the result, right. So I'll start from number two. So that courage, you make your comments. 80% um, agreed, 20% disagree. Courage, what was your, your mixed feelings? Yes, uh, I, like I mentioned, I do agree that yes, uh, an act will be an effective way of going through the whole process. Uh, but uh, one thing that I have realized is that uh, from my experience, uh, mm. uh, I must say I've done a lot of this for the past years, the Children's Act, the, most of the acts. Currently, I'm even doing one on uh, legal bargaining in Ghana, legal bargaining, uh, plea bargaining act in Ghana. And uh, if you look at the previous laws that have been made, the problem is that always it's important that you first have a policy that fits into the making of the act. Mm. You see, so, and if you don't have a policy, you see that the act is always made in a vacuum. And at the end of the day, 
its implementation becomes a big, big, big issue. Yes, policies are not legally binding, but once you have the policy in place, it gives you a certain sense of direction as to how you want the act to be made. Now, when the act is then made, we then need an ally that will then sieve out the little, little, little things that we want to implement. So I agree that yes, an act is the way to go, but we must have a policy framework in terms of a national policy as to how we want Startup Act to go so that you don't have a government that comes in today, change the mm. whole policy mm. direction. Another okay. one comes, change the policy direction, mm. and you keep having issues. Courage. So yes, and Courage. Is okay. Courage. Yes. I, I'm, I'm very interested in this submission. So hold on a little bit. Let Josiah make the submission. I think she was trying to tell me she had to pick up a call. So Josiah, you make your submission. I encourage you to continue. Josiah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think um, to touch on the point that Courage was making, he's right. The policy is important, right? But my fear is um, if we don't get both entities, the both parties or all parties that make policies together to kind of agree on this act that we want to push through, then yeah, what will happen will happen. If another government comes through, they can just sideline it and then move off and do whatever. Because um, entrepreneurship, startups or whatever will exist with or without government and um, will outlast any government that comes in. But then we don't want to be restarting at every single point. Anytime a new government comes in, then we have to go and chase another act or whatever. Now the danger here then is what is the political motive for the people involved in this particular act, right? So, so when you find out that some of us have political affiliations and it makes it easier for us to push this through, it will become problematic because what if the next party wins and you have to engage them, then what? Then they will not engage you because they know that you are from the other party, right? So when we want to really do these kind of things, we have to be honest and transparent in our party affiliations, plus why we want to even push such a national act um, forward in the first place, right? And for me, I think that's something that we definitely need to look at, that um, we should make sure that this can outlast any government. So by not making it a part of the thing as well. Mm. Mm. Great, great, great. I think, um, is that all you want to make, Josiah? Yeah. Are, now, you going to, are you going to join the second section? Yes, I'll be back probably in about 30 minutes. So sure, sure. Back. All right, all right. Thanks, thank you very much. So, Parrish, complete your submission, then Sheriff. Yes, I, 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 I think he has, uh, he has concluded my... Yes, My, uh, okay. yes, yes, he has concluded everything. So mm. I think we should take it in that stage or that level mm. so that mm. at the end of the day, we have a very comprehensive policy mm. the making of the act itself. And mm. that would be a good way to proceed. Good. So uh, would you be willing to join the, the volunteers to, 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 to champion this advocacy? As a leader, oh, I'm, 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 I'm more than willing. I'm, I'm I know you, willing. you. You'll be talking about money, courage. So, all right. <laughs> all right. So we'll come back to you again for more okay. submissions. Right. But before Sheriff, you also make your submission. I mean, let me, Daniel. You were trying to ask a question. Are you Are you ready with your question now? So we can't hear you. Your mic, your mic. Okay, let me. Unmute yourself. Unmute. Okay. Good. Good. Can hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, but still, there's a lot of background noise. Okay. Nah, nah, nah. It's so bad. We can't hear you. It's very bad. So, Albert, what's your take? What's your take on the second and the third question? Unmute yourself. Yes. 
No, Daniel, we can hear you, but there is a there are a lot of noises in your earpiece. So hello. Yeah, Albert. What's your submission on the the question two and three? Eighty percent agree, twenty percent disagree. Josiah and courage has given us a perspective and some clarity have been ironed. What is yours? Okay, I want to I want to support what uh, the two of them have said mm. that it is very critical that we get a policy document in place so that eventually the act will not be passed and then it becomes one of those that uh, are existing and there's nothing going on with them. Mm. So as we are all embarking on this journey, I think that it is important we put our heads together if it is a team that we have to form and make sure that we have a proper policy document in place, mm. which is acceptable to the nation, not mm. uh, governments mm. that comes and goes. Mm. So that when the act eventually comes on board, we know that as a country, we are deciding that this is what we want to do, and then we do it successfully. Okay, let me rope in Farouk, Sharif, and um, uh, let me, Delali. So I'm roping the three people to give us a submission on, um, it looks like question three, do you prefer the enactment or the startup ad as a critical tool for reinvigorating job creation? Only one person or which is 10% of the total number said no. Uh, who said no? If you can give us some clarity on that. Be before. Yeah, uh, so that's it. yeah but I'll ask you, Sharif. Sharif, I'm going to ask you a different question. Um, okay. Somebody... I, I have input on uh, okay. question two. All right. Uh, yeah. Which I would love to have a take on. Um, with respect to uh, what the two, my two brothers have said. Uh, okay. Josiah and uh, our legal person courage, is important. Mm. Yeah, we need to connect base or touch base with reality. Mm. Uh, let's let's understand the dynamics of our pol our politics or how. Mm. Forgive me, I'm in two Zoom meetings, so let me mute the other one. So sorry. Okay, okay. We need to connect uh, with reality. In Ghana, we have a political system that no matter what you do, whether there's an act or not, every government that comes in want to have their own policies because they believe it's the policies that set them apart. So they, they will do things or craft policies that will make them stand tall. Mm. Now, in doing a startup act, I believe what we can do, and that's why I, I, I actually picked, I disagree that uh, the startup act should not be the most effective way of actualizing the political will. But the fact is that we can do a dynamic startup act that no matter what it takes, how, however way you formulate your policies as a government, everything falls under the startup act. Number one, how do you look at supporting the business as a government? If you are coming to draft your new policies, just like uh, the, the, the current government under the Ministry of Business Development have the entrepreneurship policy, which is currently at cabinet. And, I'm, I'm not sure whether it will actually be approved now. A lot of the things that we want the act to capture are also captured in that entrepreneurship policy. They were even looking at passing an entrepreneurship act, but I think it's not going to be possible because I remember in one of our meetings, they are looking at the policy. So the point here is that whatever policies any government is coming in, our startup act should be dynamic in a way that it fits in. We are saying that a support mechanism for startups. What support mechanisms are you going to come in place with your policy? Number one, providing funding, tax, uh, what do you call it? Tax holidays or waivers, which almost every government wants to do, tax waivers, which is captured. The only thing is that the startup act will show the benchmark that you might have to go by, which I think that as leaders and as uh, think tanks, as experts, if we are putting together a startup app, let, let us all look at how to make it a bit dynamic and acceptable. Because we know in Ghana, a lot of acts that are redundant. When it's even passed as an act, they say do an LI. LI alone will take about two, three, five years. But we don't want our startup app to go through that trauma. So I believe connecting the two 
it's going to really help us. We can't just say that the Startup Act should solve every uh, problem on that. And then uh, the po uh, third point, do you prefer the enactment of the Startup Act as a critical tool okay, for jobs? No, because uh, let us not be too overambitious. The act is to promote business and invariably will promote job creation. But that cannot be the sole uh, uh, point or mechanism to use. Governments are allowed to use their own ways. For example, as you we were having a startup act, but the MPP government has the NAPCO uh, intervention, has an, another intervention at uh, what do you call it, NEP, that they are using to create jobs, which does not directly fit in our act. So the act cannot be the only thing or mechanism that should be used when it comes to job creation. So I think maybe this is just my input that I'll be waiting for your other question. Okay, okay. So Farouk, yeah. Farouk. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I say uh, something bit about what uh, Sharif just said? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Uh, concerning the, the do, uh, do you prefer the uh, enactment of the startup as a critical tool for uh, the job creation? You see, um, in a, I love the submission you made about we making the startup act very dynamic so that every policy or whatever, whoever government comes, whatever decision they make, is sit on the startup act. Now we look at how is this NAPCO and this, some of these petty, petty jobs that the yeah. government is trying to create temporary will fall on the startup act. For okay. instance, let me give you a typical example. Like um, I, have a, I have a company in, in, in Belgium. What the government does is that uh, as a startup firm, now, if people finish college and they want job placement for the first internship, they look at these sections and then they post these people to those places. So I recruit somebody who just graduated from college, but his salary is half of it is being paid by the government. Government mm -hmm. pays half and I pay half as a company. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, the little bit of tax incentive I also get. So how do we connect this startup act to some of these policies as well? How do we make it open that when government say that I'm bringing NAPCO, then it means that as startup companies, okay, I can get one person who is from NAPCO. The government is still paying the person. I can get a, uh, um, somebody from national service who is also being paid by the government. And I don't know that they is part of the policy that also imports that, okay, we are startups. We started our company. The government is also supporting. Yes, in as much as we are getting tax holiday, how are these kind of few, few, few interventions they are bringing out also helps us for us to grow. These are some of the things which also have to think, think outside the box while we are developing this act because it's come back to help us. At the end of the day, if you need a marketing personnel and they are NAPCO and the government is saying that, okay, uh, if you fall under the Startup Act and you are you registered and the government is giving you this benefit, we are going to give you maybe one staff each or two staff each. The government is going to pay for it. At the end of the day, it helps you as a company to get human resources to expand your businesses mm. while the government is paying the people. Yes, so I believe that if we also prioritize that aspect that, okay, we, it's going to help to push a lot of, and uh, create a lot of jobs, which I believe the Startup Act when passed, at least will solve about 70%. I can tell you, it will solve about 70% of this unemployment right, stuff. Right. So that, yeah, it goes. So we should really, really put it also on the call. It, it will not solve the entire problem completely, but it will solve a lot, the majority of the problem. And so mm. we should really, really put it on the call because every economy, mm. every economy is done by the entrepreneurs. It's mm. the entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs who create maximum job. If you mm. go to Europe, if now when we're talking to our brother from Morocco, if you go to Morocco right now, you see that most of the job creation is the private people, mm. is the startups and the entrepreneurs who are mm. there. How many jobs can the government himself create? Mm. Yes, and if we look at uh, this NAPCO that is running, at the end of the four years, or if another government comes, he could look at it and say, no, I don't want a nap. He will scrap it mm. and bring another one. Mm. So what mm. will become the fate of these people? And I think that's where we should also look at the startup act that we are building, so that it sits on, on, on a desk that any government who comes look at it. They can just bring another policy. Okay, let's bring uh, KKT to recruit people. But that KKT or that NAPCO or whatever that they came to bring uh, to, to employ people, it's functioning something in the startup act because the startups are also enjoying from it. They might not implement all, but at least some core aspect of it will be implemented and we also have the best right, of it. Right. The name is Isaac, right? Isaac Filson. Yes. 
Yeah, from can, can, can you tell us your company name or where you where are you telling from? Oh, my my company that. is Play Africa. Oh, okay. My That's company good. is Play. That's good. So you you, you realize the submission yeah. you made the submission you made about the example you gave us. Um, so there is also an interliaging proposal where we say NAPO can be collapsed into hiring credit for startups. So instead of um, having the NAPO with an institution or whatever, that money can be given as a hiring support for, for startup as well because they, they achieve the same purpose, right? So that's good. I get your yeah, point you very well. Yes, and uh, uh, we, we go further, it goes further that, you see, the government wants to is finding every way to create temporary job for people within the shortest possible time. Mm -hmm. Now, if we are startups, we are asking ourselves, okay, the, the act that we are building, how can this act also help the government easily in terms of creating these temporary jobs? Mm -hmm. So we, we, we state or we, we present in a way that, okay, government has temporary intervention that it can create. Because we are startup, we are running our business. Mm -hmm. We can also absorb some of these people. How? I start my company. And I need, let's say, about, uh, I, I need about five staff to help me. I need an IT person. I need an administrator. I need, uh, let's say, um, um, uh, let's say, a marketer. Yes, because I have been defined well in the Startup Act, and I qualify for, let's say, some incentives from the government, I should be able to tell the government that that NAPO project we are running, I need three staff from there. As part of, yes, yeah, so that I can apply for the government mm. to give. Mm. And if we also have the Startup Act and people are registering under the Startup Act, then it means mm. the government is going to have a proper database that yeah. they know all the startup companies that was within it that they are supporting. Sure. So if government is bringing NAPCO, the government can really quickly look at it and say, okay, um, Sharif is handling an IT firm. We have one IT person or two mm. IT person as part mm. of the NAPCO. Mm. Let's give that person to I, uh, Sharif to help Sharif's company to grow. Perfectly. Yes. Perfectly. Yes. We'll come back to you, Isaac. And we also have... We'll yeah, come back to you. you for more submission. Thank, thank you. you very well. Thank you. So, um, yeah, before before I continue, I think one of our speakers is on. Mami, Mami, you are welcome. Can you hear us? Mami. All right, so um, we had Mr. Ali talking about fund of fund. I mean, the, the fourth question asks, do we second the setting up of Startup Bank for the startup ecosystem in Ghana? Um, and about 80% said yes, and 20% said no. Um, however you, you name your, your investment structure, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is that, uh, what is it targeting, right? So do we, whether we call our startup bank or whether we call it fund of fund, right? Um, is it something that we need? Is it the way to go? Right, about 20% said no. So probably I'll take a submission from those who said no. Two people said no. I'm sorry, Justin, I couldn't respond earlier, but I could hear you. Sorry, I was having issues clicking on my icon. So. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, welcome, thank you. welcome, welcome, thank welcome. You, thank you. Sure. I believe you are following the conversation then. No, no, I am. Yeah, I am. Great, great, great. So, um, Sharif, your thoughts, Farouk, your thoughts about the startup bank? All right, uh, Justice. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually said no, but on a second thought, I think it's yes. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the first reason why I said no is that uh, I wanted to know how the system will be. Are we setting up a bank? Are we asking the government of the day mm -hmm. to set up the startup bank? Or we are going to go by what Ali and his team is doing where they kind of curate it themselves by the powers or the opportunities given by the acts. Okay. So we have a support. The reason I'm saying that it still boils down to how our structure of governance is as a country. When it has to do with money, they will not let what you are doing uh, uh, come to life. So I was looking at that. So a bit silent on, you know, those monetary issues. But definitely we have so many funding opportunities that 
I believe the act should be able to consolidate. We should bring them together and then be able to formalize in a way that startups can easily get funded. That's what I am looking, I, I was thinking, that's yeah, why so I said. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me answer that question. So, you know, we are all trying to find a solution and all our thoughts will be connected into a proposal, right? We want to push forward a white paper after this conversation. The Startup Bank is exactly what you are talking about, consolidating all the funding opportunities that we have. But our proposal is simple. We, 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 we are proposing that we should go into the Petroleum Holding Fund. And these are the two ways we are propo proposing that. A 0.05% of the Petroleum Holding Fund can set up the Startup Bank. Or an extra 1% increase in corporate tax on the oil company can use to set up the fund. Now, when these money are being mobilized to set up the startup bank, the second step is to invite equity, equity investors to come on board. Let me use this, um, use Tony Elumelu Foundation as a good example. Tony Elumelu Foundation started with his own money, right? And then later he plugged in a lot of investors, GIZ joined, UNESCO joined, Red Cross joined, right? And they were all releasing funds to support certain intervention, all right? So in Tunisia, they are saying that they are, they are raising funds to set up fund of fund. However you do it, however it's favorable for our ecosystem, that's the way to go. So the startup bank is not, it's not like any commercial bank. It's just a, an investment structure we're going to set and then we plug in a lot of, as you said, we consolidate a lot of funding investment opportunities within the ecosystem. Do you get a, the point I'm making? Do you I get, get your point? point perfectly. Great. Yes, Great. I get your point perfectly. Uh, but then just to add up, mm. uh, what we are also, or what we did, like I said, I have some mm. update to give the house when you give me the chance, but like to okay. touch on the finance. We actually looked at the various financial uh, opportunities that mm. are kind of now available and how we can be able to put them in the act and uh, just some new things. We're okay. looking at setting up a financing program for early state, that's the pre seed uh, startups. Okay. This will be done by the Ministry of Finance, where mm. uh, young startups, the moment you get the label, you can be able to go there and have a fund. We're also mm. looking at the startup investment fund. So mm. we did it categorize it as a bank anyway, but like be able to consolidate the dotted or the differentiated kind of support into about two or three categories. Mm. And then also looking at the startup guarantee fund, uh, which I think at the end of the day, we might be talking about the same thing. Perfectly. That, uh, Perfectly. You, Perfectly. The, the bank, well, we, can, we can discuss that more when mm. we are pushing for this so that we can yeah. be able to arrive at what will be good for our our system? What we yeah. know our people need mm. to be mm. to accept mm. what we work for us here. Great, great. Faru, what's your take on that? Yeah, I think I think it's brilliant. I mean, I mean, from a business standpoint, I see an opportunity. If as a case where there's not there's no startup bank. I mean, from Sharif submission, I can see some similarities in terms of ideas from what you expressed and from what he's expressing. We all come, we are coming from the same, you know, background. But let's also not forget that once we're able to create, you know, um, a startup ecosystem that has legal binding, it also creates opportunities for FDIs. People outside will look at the country as, look, it's, it's, it's a terrain that is ripe for startups instead of if my country is not, um, when you look at the sub-region, you could understand that most countries don't have such a framework. So once people see Ghana has such a, such a framework, they find it as a very, you know, fertile grounds to come and build their startup. And that's FDI generation. Um, what happened with these microfinance companies? They saw an opportunity, right, to approach these startups. And most of their clients were startups. And we saw what happened. So there's an opportunity, not just from the government standpoint, but from the private space. We, we don't want a situation where it's just government. We, it's, the narrative has always been the same where government feels overburdened. Brilliant ideas, and, but once the implementation takes off, 
then, you know, the elements of surprise always, you know, comes in. Um, like what the various, you know, panelists have, you know, subscribed to, we need a very collective approach. Sharif just raised a very important point that the minute, I think the government is thinking about um, the Entrepreneurship Act. Sharif, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, government um, is, yes, government is also, so you, you, you could see that, look, there's a certain direction, maybe it has been very slow, not surprisingly, but once we have a very collective approach, um, we are making a decision here today, starting an enterprise that will rely strongly on government preparedness, government readiness. Has government decided to develop, you know, that ecosystem? So I'm sure moving forward, it's not going to end here. I want to see because there's been a trend where you submit a very brilliant idea only to, to have a meeting to be told, oh, Farouk, you know what? We had something very similar. Then you ask yourself, what happened? Well, we looked at the consultants on board and these are very known political figures. So when we came into power, we figured. So as we are starting this enterprise, we should like, you know, people said, we should be very, very dynamic. We should look at those acts or policies or, you know, interventions that have failed and see how differently we're going to approach this. Yes, we need a startup bank. Um, just as your submission was very brilliant. If indeed we want to start, we have a startup bank, we will find creative ways to find a funding. A okay. percentage from the petroleum fund is brilliant not just the petroleum fund. It is, it's always a case where if government is bent on doing something, the solution is always available, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, so it's, yes, it's, it's, it's about preparedness. We need hmm. government in this. We need ourselves. We need to be very consistent. We hmm. should push this agenda strongly because I mean, once we have a very thriving ecosystem of startups, it goes a long way to build spending power you know, of a young population, and it creates that domino effect and the economic transformation that we all want to see would manifest. Right, right. So that's, that's my yeah. Point. So um, to to add, to I that, come in. I will invite. Hold on, Kotoka. Hold on a little bit. I will invite Mami to to make a submission, and then. But before he he, he does that, um, we we have to have the right motive, the right mind in pushing this advocacy. Look. The Tunisians have expressed to us that they didn't go the Moroccan way. They have decided to go non-governmental. Though they believe that they are going to work with the government all right, but the approach in initiating this advocacy was different, right? So as stakeholders, as non-governmental entities, I believe that we need to come together, consolidate our efforts, submit a white paper. That is all this conference is about. We want to collect all these thoughts, submit a white paper, present it to the right people, present it to the media house, let our voice get well known to the government. If you allow the politicians to fill that void of advocacy, they will produce, as, as Ali said, they are, they are very corrupt system when it comes to the political regime. So we don't need to go or trend that way. Right. So let me invite Mami to make a submission within what he has said so far. Right. Um, okay. You know, I kind of like stepped in late, uh, but just based on what I have, I think I was supposed to come in at one, but based on what I've heard, I was going to say that I was wondering to what extent the act can incorporate the AFCFTA, so like the consent of free trade area, just because it covers goods and services, right? And the services element also constitutes the fact that you can actually have other Africans coming in to work here or you can take or bring in their services here. And you, you can also take your services to other African countries. And my thing is that I do know that it is key that if you have any model or any agreement or legal framework, it has to work in Ghana first before you can expand. But I really feel also that um, Ghana is a very small, we have a very small market. And I was just wondering, that um, is there a way we can have an act that looks at the services element of the AFCFTA and also um, to see how can we have like a parallel program with other countries that are party to this agreement? Just because it's, um, 
how do I even say it? First of all, you need a bigger middle class, right? For the economy to thrive. And we have a lot of people in the informal sector. And to bring the people in the informal sector into the middle class, you need to be able to empower them, right? Through business and everything. So my thing is that, can we also collaborate? Because I know Senegal has also implemented this apart from Tunisia, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And I know South Africa is considering to also implement this a startup act. So I'm wondering, how can we collaborate with the countries that are close by within Africa to, to be able to want to think about funding or expand our market? Because honestly, Ghana is just a little too small. And that's why we're really having this, the Gupta issue. We are struggling because I really feel like also beyond the fact that we want, we need funding to expand our businesses. We shouldn't forget that when foreign investment comes in, who negotiates those foreign investments, right? And so forgive me if I'm going to go on a little bit of a rabbit trail because I have so many things in my mind. <laughs> so it's like, first of all, when the foreign investment comes in, the, the thing is that when the negotiation is done, we forget that the foreign company is also looking at how much they can maximize profit. Now they give the semblance of the fact that, okay, we've given you some funding. Usually the fund is never enough to bring you to a place where you can compete evenly or fairly. Mm. So let's just say if VW came in, right? I felt like a good agreement that the government could have negotiated was for them to partner with a local company here to manufacture cars. Mm. So that it's not just that we are assembling cars here, mm. but you transfer a skill. And also if VW ever decides to leave, we can still have like manufacturing a manufacturing plant that can operate mm. without mm. them. I don't know if I'm mm. making sense. Yeah, you, so, you. so that I wonder if the ads can also, first of all, incorporate the idea of collaboration. Whereby the Ghanaian market is too small. We know Facebook is already in Nigeria. Mm. Why would they go to Nigeria? Nigeria has mm. a big market, right? And why is America struggling to negotiate this agreement with Kenya, this new trade agreement with Kenya, right? Because Kenya has a big market. So is there a way we can say, incorporate the idea of collaboration where we have collaborative mm -hmm. agreements with uh -huh, with our mm -hmm. other um, countries like the Kenya, SA, whether mm -hmm. it's in the area of the tech space, stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? For funding, mm -hmm. we have Afro champions, right? They're looking at building more African multinationals. How can you incorporate um, initiatives that are continental initiatives into the act, mm -hmm. right? Because Afro champions came into being more for the AFCFT anyway. Mm. and to give funding right so yeah. and then how do you now incorporate the idea of negotiation mm. where government doesn't negotiate any mm. investment in mm. our in the sme space without mm. people who are already in that space because you don't know what is being negotiated i don't know if you realize we yeah. just wake up one day and we hear we have foreign investors right but we, you don't see the money trickling down right. you see nice buildings right yeah. But that develop, development model is very skewed. So how can we even say that we want to be on the table, the negotiation table? Mm. Because you can't negotiate something for, you're talking about we want to bring investors to come into the private sector, but how do you negotiate stuff when we don't know what's happening? Mm. You know, we want to be there to know what you're negotiating to mm. say, this will not work here. You know, this mm. money is coming, is going to create more problems in this sector. Mm. We don't need it. Mm. sort of kind of thing right mm. so i don't know i don't know if i, I don't want to talk i'm, I'm going yeah so you much. are you are being a little biased because of your trade expertise but i understand i mean <laughs> right you, you, you realize that um most within the startup ecosystem when it comes to import and export is one key things we, we key thing we need to look at in right. in the fact that you there have been a new narrative a new right. momentum within the trade in the free continental area, right? right it will kick right. start January. It will kick start January. But right. are we prepared to take advantage? Are we prepared to compete as a, as a Ghanaian SME? Or are we, right. are we ready? Because other African countries are well prepared more than us. We are just four right. months away from the kickstart. Are we ready? So these are the discussions we need to throw into. These are policies or, or thoughts we need to begin to have a discussion around. Yeah, you said right. Ghana looks very small. Yes, in, when you go to the European countries, right. the EU itself has enacted a startup act EU for the EU continent, right? Apart right. from mm -hmm. the, the European Union countries having their own startup act, the European right. Union as a group right. 
has a, has a startup act that actually create the legal framework and remove those barrier or red blocks, right? To enable business transaction to go through, right? So we, we have to look at all these things. What are we trying to do? I mean, the talking is becoming too long. Since 2017, we started this. 2018, we launched it to, to create the awareness. 2019, the Young Chamber of Young Entrepreneurs also joined. They amplified it. They, they've made a lot of stakeholder discussion. That is good. But we have to tell ourselves that it's time. We have to present a white paper, involve, plug in the media house, just like the right to information bill. It took so many years. But we have to own it. We have to take that space. We have to, we have to fill that gap in void. Other than that, when we allow the politicians to fill it for us, it's going to be right. very problematic. Tunisians have set the, the pace for us. They have demonstrated. In fact, they, they did a presentation before we, we, we got to this point, right? We invited them to do a presentation with us. And we realized that it solely, it solely started with a private stakeholder. They started the mm -hmm. whole thing. And they are even managing the whole thing, right? The yeah. issuing of the startup labels are being managed by a college. This college are members of private stakeholders, not government, right? So I believe that we have to consolidate all our long talk and, 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 and thought, whatever you put it, and present an official position. And then around that, as one voice, we can amplify our voice and push this to the table where it needs to be. Right. So thank you for your submission. We are, we are not done with you, though. So Kotoka, um, you wanted to yeah, make just a point. Push. Yes, you wanted to make a point. Yes, we are I still couldn't, talking I, about the Southern Bank. Yeah, sure. I couldn't actually do my submission on the last two uh, points, I think. So I'll just okay. do a consolidation of uh, whatever is going on. And to me, I think um, from Sherry's submission and then I think... Uh, Farouk. The other guy, oh, Mami. Uh, Farouk, exactly. Okay. There are two. And also Mami. Mami actually spoke about trade, but in, in her speech also, you see that there are only two, three, two things actually that is... Um, running through all this, our political environment, and then uh, uh, we being dynamic in what we are trying to put across. Uh, political environment, because it's something we critically have to look at. We can't overlook this uh, political environment or what, uh, political environment we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's never stable. So you see that every government that is coming really want to develop their policies they think is going to help uh, create jobs and stuff like that. And this whole job creation policies they actually bring is to score political points to win power after four years. And it becomes a problem. If four years they are unable to win power, it means that the whole policy they are creating becomes really shaky. Mm -hmm. And that you, uh, new, if the new party comes into power, they are also looking at creating policies. And then we continue this way and it's yeah. never stabilized. Kotoka, I'm, I'm not cutting you. Delali, I'm not cutting you. Delali, I'm not cutting you. But before you end your submission, okay. um, I, because you are from the tourism space, I want you to tell us something. What is your perspective in terms of considering certain thematic areas that can support the, the how do you call it, the entrepreneurs within the, the, the tourism space? Can you give us a fair um, representation or uh, perspective about that. All right, so I think um, I've still been doing a lot on and scouting for more opportunities. And unfortunately, uh, we started on a good note with the year of return um, uh, event, which I think was something really good that was going to help the country to bring in more investment and to also develop the tourism sector. Unfortunately, we got uh, entangled in this whole COVID-19 situation, which has actually brought down uh, uh, the whole hope and courage we actually have in developing the tourism sector. But notwithstanding that with systems now getting stabilized, there's a lot of strategies that are actually coming up and a lot of uh, industry players are trying to find means and ways to redevelop and to uh, recap their whole tourism and then approach to how they actually provide their services. And uh, we also in, in the industry are not different from what others are actually doing. In Ghana, right now, a lot of things we have to consider is more technological 
uh, using relying on a lot of digital platforms in actually promoting our tourism industry. And one aspect we are also not paying attention to is more of the adventure aspect, which Ghana really has the potential in developing to uh, help create more jobs. Also, to talk about uh, education, it's, it will be surprising to know that more of our tourist sites you visit, more of our guides, just apart from a few, more of our guides are not educated especially on issues of customer service and as to how they can go about handling customers to be able to bring in repeat visits and stuff like that. Uh, apart from Kakum National Park, you may go Cape Coast Castle or Mina Castle, which are, um, so to say, more formal and they have a really good system. All the rest just get some of these GSS boys who don't really know how to interact with people or how to get to put themselves, have that empathy to put themselves in the shoes of uh, the people, their clients, to know how to handle them and how they will feel and how to control them at the point in time is what is actually lacking. If you go okay. to East Africa, if you go to South Africa, you don't really see these things. You see a lot of them do go for trainings, they, they, they are well dressed and how they even approach customers is something we actually need to reproduce in Ghana if we really want to grow our tourism industry. So that is just uh, something in a GFA, but um, at, at the right time, I think with this enactment we are bringing up, I'll also do my contribution a lot with the research I am working on uh, to add up to the Startup Act to make it more compatible with the tourism right. industry. All right, thank you. So, so let I think okay. um, we okay. should be, the dynamism we are talking about is something that can position this whole startup act and be able to give it some um, um, facelift. So we should be looking at that. We should consider the political environment within which we are and see how we can position ourselves so that whichever party we find in power, whichever party comes into power, will be able to ride on what we have produced, our policy or the act we are bringing out, so that each year, Whenever or whenever a, a political party gets changed, they are able to follow that same path that we can see growth within our uh, uh, system. Okay. So that's Great. my submission. Thank you. So Thank you for your submission. Let's let's finish with the the, the results of the pool. Like right. so, the last three questions says that um, defining startup and issuing startup labels to qualify entrepreneurs is fundamental to the ecosystem. I think everybody said yes. Everybody agreed to that fact. Tunisians are doing that. In fact, Tunisians are saying that each and every year, it's very competitive. When they give you the startup label, you can lose it, right? So we have to always meet the indicators. If you are not able to fall within the indicators, whether it is six months or 12 months or two years, whatever it is, you are going to, they'll take the label off you and you will not enjoy the incentives within the startup act. So we all agree that there should be startup label as well. Now, the, the sixth question said, should startup be given tax holidays and stipends? We all said yes. Tunisians give startup owners or startup funders and co-founders stipend, like a monthly allowance, right? Aside the tax holidays, we agree to that. Now, the last question said that, should SNIT be paid on behalf of any startup entrepreneur? Very controversial, but I think 20% said no. In Tunisia, they pay the SNIT contribution for every co-founder and founder of the innovation. Right. So those who said no, can we hear some submissions from you? Those who said no, there's no need to, to actually um, pay the SNIT contribution for, for the startups. Is anybody here who said no? Yeah, um, yes, I, I, I personally said no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let me explain. I think uh, we should also look at how we make our startup entrepreneurs have a, uh, some aspect of responsibility. Mm. Yes, in the work that they are doing. We are looking at all the benefits that government is going to give to us because, let's say, you are a startup entrepreneur. He's paying you, um, he's giving you, um, let's say, tax free. They are giving you, they are setting up a, a fund for you where you can access money to start your funding 
we are looking at how it creates jobs for you, how maybe government will post maybe national service and some of these people to come to work in your firm and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, if, if you have a founder, two founders, and you have maybe one staff that is not from the government directly, that you are the one who have employed, I think the aspect of paying for social security or SNET shouldn't be a problem because you have all these freebies. Now, how are you calculating your income? How are you saving? How are you expanding your businesses? Some of these responsibilities need to be on your head so that you know that at the end of the day, I'm getting this benefit from the government, but I also have this responsibility that will enforce me or that will encourage me to work harder. Otherwise, a lot of people, we, from the terrain that we are working from here, you know, when people have a lot of free things, they become very relaxed. Their innovations and creativity dies off at the end of the day because they think, whatever be the case, within the five years or eight years, I'm enjoying all these things free. So which responsibility do they have? Yes, so that aspect of your own future, securing your own future, should be in your own hands. So and Isaac, also in Isaac let me hold on that. Hold on. A very important point you're making. Um, one argument we submit is this. Um, we all came out from um, whether it's tertiary sector or whatever you find yourself, right? Um, majority yes. decided to be employed, okay? Majority also decided to work for government, others decided to work for the private institution. As a result, I mean, your, your SNIT contribution is being captured, right? Where you also contribute a little percentage than the company does so. Right. Others also decided yes. not to put the burden on the country. Others raise their time, they raise their money. They can invest all that they have to start a business. And in one year, they can lose everything. Right. We're saying that within the startup definition period, why can't government take care of the founder of this innovation? Just as Tunisians are doing the same. Because there are two groups of people. One is saying that I'm not going to burden the government. I'm going to create jobs, create opportunities for people. And mind you, they are not paying net contribution for the workers of these startups. They are only paying con the net contribution for only the founder. You get it? Because when Ali was making the submission, he said that the thematic area behind, the motivation behind that was to dare a lot of people to go into starting their own business. And they see this as one of the motivation. When somebody look out, government is going to support me, contribute eight years, my net pay for me. And it's such a motivation for me even to start business with, with that confidence or without that motivation. I believe, I believe that there are school of thought, but when you weigh the two, the one who is sacrificing his time, his effort, who can fail at the end of five years, six years, or seven years, deserve a SNIT contribution more than the one who has even burdened the government most. Do you get the argument? Right, because yeah, um, uh, a lot of people's business have folded up and they have invested a lot of business. They wish they, 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 they got employed by a government institution and they wouldn't suffer this pain or those kind of stuff. Do you get the point? So that is the argument we are also coming from. So that's the only rebuttal I, I Yeah, my make. brother, I really, I, yeah. Okay, Samuel, okay. I'll come to I you. Really Let Isaac you, finish, then I'll come to you. Okay, okay. yeah. Just a just few, just few seconds, then I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll end this. Please, uh, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, um, I think one other thing we should understand is that the fact that you are a startup doesn't mean you are doing the government a favor. You are not doing anybody a favor. It is your abilities and your capabilities in you that you want to explore. You want to bring it out. It is not because you have lost your job. That's why you want to be a startup. It is because there's some innovative idea in you that you want to bring up. There's something unique in you that you think you want to leave the odds and come out and bring it out. In as much as it's going to help the economy, it is for your profit gain. Because if you succeed, in as much as you're also employing people for them to pay them or government later, yes, maybe you start to pay tax for government to enjoy. It is for your gain. Yes, and so we have to look at it from that angle. The government is coming in to help you with so many things. Now, if we have to, uh, it's a good thing. It makes you, the, the founder, very relieved from some kind of pressure though from, from the beginning within the startup definition period. But now let's ask ourselves that where lies the responsibility of you? 
where lies the responsibility of you as an entrepreneur? The government is giving you tax free. The government will give you a startup fund. The government will give you maybe human resources. Um, the government will give you maybe capacity building. And you, the person who, who created it, for you to pay for your own security, that one should be the government responsibility. I think it's too much load on the government. We should have some, that wow. aspect of our own responsibility as an entrepreneur, as a startup. And it's for our own good. It's for our own good because you know that at the end of the day, all these freebies the government is giving to you, all these benefits the government is giving to you, you are also working very hard to secure something for yourself in the good, long term. Good, good, good. I think we've defended your submission, though. <laughs> yes, someone. Uh, justice. Yeah, someone. Justice. Um, yeah, thank someone. you very much, Justice. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, thank you very much, Justice. And um, I also have an answer, which is a big no. Uh, in, in solidarity with my uh, brother who just spoke. Okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, I, I also have similar points to, to back what he's saying, actually. You know, we are talking about an act which is going to support um, startup by giving them free ta uh, like tax holidays. And mm. all these models have been tested in other countries and has been something that has... Um, uh, has been successful in other countries but like now let's ask ourselves what is the context it looks like the discussion is focused on what tunisia is doing already and then um you know trying to bring that in in our startup act which i ask myself what is the context definitely the context is different tunisia is a different setup a different country in terms of politics in terms of income of the country and all that um they are a bit ahead of us let me let me put it that way and um, their structures are different uh, in terms of they have they are, the, the country might have a good database system where they can track entrepreneurs and all that. So if they have such a policy or they have um, such a policy within their act, it's very understandable. But it's not um, right to just go and copy such a policy and then come and drop it in this act. That's one point we should think one of, uh, of, the, of the context. The context is really, really different from what we are, we are having in Ghana and even other African countries if they want to replicate. I don't know of any evidence that support this. So we should also think in a research perspective, what um, research evidence supports this kind of um, policy for, for, for supporting growing businesses, you understand? Mm -hmm. And then the other point is what has been reiterated here. Being an entrepreneur, you don't owe us or you don't owe the government or you don't owe the country to, in order to support you. And then um, in terms of capacity building, give you free um, labor and all that and even tax holiday on top and as well as pay uh, for your Senate contribution. No, you don't owe us for being an, an entrepreneur. And I remember um, Justice yourself, you, you've told me that, you know, and even um, in some of our discussion, you made mention of the fact that being an entrepreneur is a risk that you are taking. And then when it goes well, it's for you. When it goes bad, it's also on you. So you are looking at the profit motive and being innovative with, with, with your thinking. So we, we as a country don't owe you for that. Yes, we, we owe you um, in terms of supporting you, in terms of uh, giving you tax holidays and all that, in order for you to be very competitive on the market. But then we don't, uh, as a country, need to support entrepreneurs or startup with um, a, ta uh, uh, a SNIT contribution. And the other one is we don't have the database to check who is free riding or not. So we as Ghanaians, we know, um, and even evidence supports this, that, you know, once something is free, people free ride a lot. Example, let me give you a typical example. There was a time where mosquito, um, mosquito nets were being shared um, uh, freely to, to, to students. And then I remember as a student, I received a mosquito net. I used it, but other students also use it for different purposes. And to the extent that people were using, using the mosquito net that were shared freely um, in some parts of Accra for fishing, instead of using it for, 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 for um, protecting themselves from malaria. So sometimes when things are free, we tend to free ride on these things and then not um, um, use it for the internet purpose. It will shock you that once we, we, this act has been accepted based on political reasons, a lot of youth will say, oh, let me jump into, into entrepreneurship because there are, there are a lot of free, freebies in there where I can enjoy some of these freebies uh, for myself. So yes, 
um, we should think about the context. And then one, the, the next point is we don't owe you as an entrepreneur. It's, it's for your gain. It mm. was for, for your own mm. uh, benefit in terms of profit. And as yeah. well as the final point is the government, does the government even have the capacity to pay this? That's mm. another question that we, we need to ask ourselves. Mm. The government is already in debt and mm. will they have the capacity to pay this? And the final mm. one I want, to, I want to bring to the fold is that this is an act that we are going to act, even though it's, it's an act that we want it to be um, accepted. We should have a foot in the door first. And uh, if we ask too much things, it will be taken off the table. So we right. go with things that yeah. we see yeah. that are, yeah. are, are very reasonable and, and have evidence backing them than saying that because Tunisia is doing this, we can do this for our startups in Ghana. Thank you very much. That's a great submission. We have just yeah. 15 minutes to end. I'm coming, please. We have just 15 minutes to end. Um, this is what I want us to do. We, we want to issue white paper, uh, mm -hmm. consolidate all our thoughts here, and we want to submit it to the Speaker of Parliament, the Minority Leader, the Majority Leader, and selected media houses. Now, before we end, everybody will give us just three important thematic areas you want us to capture on the white paper. Um, nonetheless, um, Kwejo Yangsin is, is with us, right? But because of some few issues, you cannot connect. Efia Poku, the same thing. The, oh, the, hey. the, hello? They, they are full with us. They want to be part of this, this agenda. So they will, they will fully sign the white paper as well. We will also try and get more ambassadors to help us amplify this voice as well. So those who, yeah, have, not, who have not made submission yet, Sheriff, I'll come to you, please. Give me some, give me some one minute, please. Okay, it is in regards to the white paper. So okay, okay, because, okay, uh, okay. Talk, talk, talk. Important. Yeah. Yes. So just as like I said, um, to all of us here, I, I think this is important that we take note as we mm. work on the white paper. Mm. You remember when we, uh, uh, the ecosystem started to work on this, uh, Josiah, his team, you, the chamber and others, and I think yeah. even the uh, NEP, National Entrepreneurship, uh, yeah. what one thing is that the Ministry of Business Development uh, is happy and willing for the Startup Act to rule. And so we have had a bit of meetings with them. That, that is the chamber, uh, uh, the uh, Ghana Half Network, and then other key stakeholders. I think the good news is that as I, as I talk to you, uh, there's been a team which you were, I think, formerly or you are so part of. The team had been able to secure some funding. And this funding is supposed to enable this team come out with the, the Ghana startup at which the government is now working together with, with the whole team. And that's why I, I keep telling you that I needed to update you on this very important uh, stride. So basically, as now as I speak to you, funding has been secured, and we are we are going to use this opportunity to work together with every stakeholder on this call and with yourself and reconsidering our white paper how we are going to work on this. The funding is for us to develop the startup at own it ourselves, and a lot of work has been done. The consultant is called I for Policy. I'm sure you've heard of them. They were the same people that helped the the Senegal to come up with their act. So they are helping Ghana as well to supporting us because they have a Ghanaian represented, uh, representation. So that is a, the, an act, a kind of a proposed one has been drafted, which I would love that uh, we'll get the, 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 what do you call it? The consultant is almost done. We'll send it to you so that you can share with all the stakeholders. And I'm using this opportunity to say that all these stakeholders are part or support, uh, invited as opposed to part of this thing for us to work on this whole thing so that we can achieve uh, a common front with a common front we can be able to push this i wish josiah was to be uh, here he would have assented to some of the things that we have done so far so basically that is just what i said i have to inform you so that we will not have a divided front kind of fighting for one thing we can all unite and consolidate our effort and make sure that this way the team has been able to go the this as well. let's look at what they have done and now that they even have funded to support the operation, how do we work together in a quick space to be able to come up with a Ghana startup act and be able to push? Great, so that's great. 
great, great, great. Farouk, I'm coming, I'm coming. Um, Sheriff, so uh, how come I'm not part of these things? I've been taken out of this space, right? If I'm supposed to be part so of it. So you remember? Nonetheless. Yes, you, yeah. you remember we have, so let me come. You remember we have a committee which you are part of, which the chamber called all stakeholders to come and form. And you were not even there, but you were added because we everybody recognized the effort you started. But later on, when we, are, when we engage the ministry, the ministry told us that, yes, they are willing to accept the Startup Act and to push it. But they insisted we work with the others. You know, we were not having the Ghana Hub Network as right. part of us. Right. We are not having other uh, 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 the stakeholders. So in your group, your chairman told you that he was going to represent you people in the committee. Right, I remember. And that is the right. committee. Uh -huh. That is the committee that has been yeah. working. I right. that yeah. your chairman should have come back to you people to be updated. Mm. But you see, they can never. We this thing can never be done without people like you, Farouk, and the rest, mm. and even lawyer. We okay. we can we can never be done without. It's just right. to facilitate to get the funding for us mm. to work mm. on this mm. that the mm. So right. for you, right. you right. always. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a good step. Um, Farouk, I'm coming to you, but give me just one minute. Um, so sure. what Alfred is also doing is just a continuation that we started. I mean, when we started this, a lot of people didn't know what a startup act is, though. So it's good that you made good step. We appreciate that. It's what we're going to do doesn't destroy what you are doing or what you've done or what is going on. It's just going to enrich or amplify the voice we are trying to champion, right? We are, we are just going to submit a white paper. That is not a startup draft. We are just going to submit a white paper to, to make our voice known and, and, and more relevant in the quarters that they need to be known. Well, I know I for policy. I for policy, probably if they have started doing this, will be recent. Because I know what they've been working on for the past five years. And the Startup Act was not part of it. So probably a year ago, they started doing this with you guys. So good, we are going to join, but we still believe that- yeah, the They are the people that facilitated the Senegal. I think if you know them, then you should know they are the people facilitated for no, the Senegal. No, I know Senegal. I for policy. I know I for yeah, policy. We have been waiting for it for some yeah. years now. Yeah. But Farouk, anyway. Farouk. Farouk. Yeah, hello. You can... Justice. Hello. Hello? We can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Farouk, talk. We can hear you. Farouk. All right, Tio, Tio, you are welcome. Dr. Tio, you are welcome. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. My apologies. Uh, I've been on child duties all of this afternoon <laughs> so it's only now that my little girl went oh, to goodness. sleep she's been a bit unwell so please forgive me <laughs> speedy recovery all right. to her justice yeah. justice yeah Farouk. yeah i mean what is um what's um yeah, Farouk, tarif, submi you. Ta tarif submission you know buttress my point about this collectiveness that I've been calling for. I mean, we've had this conversation two hours, 15 minutes to wrap up, and a very critical submission comes up about Startup Act, how far they've gone, there's even funding, funding has been secured, and you know, so then it, it becomes disjointed. Another group, we're also going to present a white paper. So there is an ecosystem. The conversation is already rife, people are pushing. So let's be collective in our approach i mean for me i was also equally surprised that justice you were not in the know of you know certain progress that has been made so let's 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 close ranks let's be collective in our approach let's communicate more i don't want this conversation to end here my earlier point about the importance of politics politicians in this entire enterprise is that yes Politicians have always been very, you know, tricky. A lot of policy somersaults based on our political dispensation. But like you mentioned, we need ambassadors to, to drive this conversation. The smart thing we can do is to have political representation from all these politicians, political parties to be part of this call so that it, it also comes 
back to the point of this all-inclusive approach. So I think from here, Sharif, I mean, the conversation will, will move further. Justice, we all come together. And I think if Sharif says they are, you know, miles ahead, they are almost, you know, they also have a certain act that has been prepared, the document, then we come together. It doesn't stop us from going back to the speak, going to the Speaker of Parliament again to present our case, going to minority, majority speaker to present our case. So, I mean, let's hold hands, close ranks, and push this agenda. It's a very important one. Great, yeah. great, so, great, Farouk, great. a quick one. Doc uh, justice, just yeah, a quick yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, Farouk, it is not a different startup. It is now that you and I and the rest will sit on the same table to now draft the art. We are going to present what the, the proposed one for stakeholders to finalize. And that's why I said that uh, the reason we are working with the government is that they are going to, no matter what you do, they are going to make sure uh, it's being enacted or passed. If they don't accept it or they are not part of it, it won't work. So here is a case we have the government agency as mm -hmm. part of the, the technical committee that has pushed for the funding. So all of you, I, I repeat this thing, and justice is already part, just that his chairman was supposed to update him and make sure he knows the role that we are all going to play. So everyone sure. here is going to be part for us to develop a very comprehensive startup act based on the fact that God being so great, we have the funding. And then we can even be possible, uh, we can be able to push it because the funding partner has even agreed to help us with the fund to advocate. Instead of we yeah. even struggling, they, are, they have approved all those things. So that is the, the point. It's not yet brilliant. Sorry. Brilliant, brilliant. Sorry. And I can also call for yeah. Ghana Startup Secretariat, you know, <laughs> Farouk, the proper representation Farouk, I'm so coming, we... I'm coming. Let me, let me make this point, right? Yeah, there have been a lot of progress, as Sherry is saying. We, as I said, my position, our position is a bit different. The Tunisians may, gave us that advice, right? When it comes to this startup act and stuff, we have to be very careful how we, we look in the government. People have done it without any funding, right? There are legal consultants, legal experts who decided to, I mean, avail themselves to support. There are individuals, experts who actually contributed to the enactment of the Startup Act. And the man said that they own it. Even the College of Startup that issued the, the Startup label are managed and owned by the private stakeholders. So my position is a bit different. I don't want to go that direction as well. But as I said, there is nothing wrong with issuing a white paper and letting the people who matters in terms of lawmaking be aware of what we're doing. The chamber is also championing the same agenda, which we actually initiated to them. We want to be part of what they are doing, and we also need them to be part of what we want to do. So as a much as that we want to be part of where they've got into in in getting a, a holistic and compre comprehensive participatory act or proposal, we believe that the chamber should also connect with us to submit a white paper. When you have a lot of voices amplifying the same thing, it goes the same positive direction, it doesn't change anything. So what we are asking is not presenting a draft. We are presenting the, the awareness, let the lawmakers, they've never mentioned anything like startup act in the parliament house. They've never done that. We haven't seen a lot of media houses discussing the, the need for the Startup Act. We are coming from a different angle and we want to be part of what the chamber is doing. So the chamber too have to be part of what we're doing. It doesn't change anything. We are on the same page. So, so we, that's a, that's yeah. the point. There is not we and the you. It is mm. still the same thing. Because Perfect. you have the government startup uh, network here. They are part of the, that committee. Mm. We, we, we have so many other different stakeholders and then legal pe people that are part of that committee. So there's not a we and you here. It is the one thing. It's not the chamber's thing. Uh, it's even front by the Ghana Half Network because they have worked with the funding partner already. So we are all, my point here is that a position paper, I, I am in support with it because we have to be making them right. But the question, the brilliant question here is that you do not even have an act that what you what are proposing. The stakeholders have not agreed on something. What then are you advocating for? 
That is a point. But when we are able to meet, and then we are able to get a front document, the points, these are the thematic areas that you and I who are uh, uh, stakeholders agreed on. Then you can have a very reasonable point to be able to sit on the media or talk to the, the what do you call it? The speaker of Sheriff, yes. Yes, I think, I mean, we understand each other very well. Do you understand? So, yeah, yeah we are on the same page. We don't necessarily need to draft an act before you start advocating for. The Tunisians never drafted an act before advocating. They, they got the approval. They got the relevant attention. And they put together a lot of... Yeah, but you know, yes, so don't, don't limit yourself to only the Tunisians. We have no. also engaged the Senegals, the Senegalese. The mm -hmm. Tunisians had the support of the government from onset. And they were now appointed. You remember what he said? They were appointed to work on it. Just I like know. the way the of Ghana now... The Minister of uh, Business Development now in Ghana is accepting it and is calling on us to work on it. And that's why I said that let's present a united front. Let's consider what, it's not even two, it's the same thing we are doing. Exactly. You are looking so, at the- So you agree to the point what? that we should submit a white paper? I don't have a problem with the white paper, okay. but as so at now, we... what is mm -hmm. the intent of the, what, what, would the, 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 what is the intent of the white paper? What are we achieving? A I am only telling you that. Paper, well, let me just answer you so that we, we let Dr. come in and then Josiah also come in. Then yes. we conclude. But my point the is white, that I'm only paper, telling you that. Sheriff, the white, uh -huh. paper, the white paper is not a draft. It is not a proposal. It's just no, no, the no, position. No, no, no. We are not even talking about It's just a position yes. of, of our thoughts, what we think. Right. And, and I'm already telling you that the government, I am also adding up to let you know that the government is already having a position on this. How then do we, how can we utilize it? Is it is like you are going to me already for something and okay. uh, I, have, I am already aware of it. I am working on it. How do we speed it up? Or better great, so how do great, we... Great. I get your point. I get your point now. I get your point. I get your point now. I get your point. Doc. Doc. Dr. Chu. Uh, yes, 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 I'm here. I, I'm actually I could, listening. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening yeah. very, very keenly from <laughs> yeah, the both so, of you. So yeah. my, my small contribution really is, I think you're both right. Your white paper typically should reflect what government thinking or the current position is, and therefore what sort of gaps you've identified, right? either as an organization or as like individuals and what those gaps, like solutions to those gaps pretty much, you know. So it shouldn't stand different from what exists currently within like the broad policy space or policy architecture. And then you are just really adding on to that in terms of, okay, you've started this process. This is what we think it should probably look like based on X, Y, Z, uh, you know, dynamics that you've identified. And going forward, we are prepared to either support you or help you sort of in coming to, um, you know, some, some um, position on the, on the act itself. Because remember, there are even stages even to get an act um, passed um, beyond engaging uh, the, the government agencies. There's parliament, there's a select committee, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And then when the act is even passed, the more substantive issues about you know financing, um, connecting what people are doing in the entrepreneurship space to the wider industrial policy of the country. You know all those things are like big thematic issues. But I think if you're going to be writing a white paper or a policy position, then you need to reflect what government has done or is doing currently as part of that process. Great, great. Then the next question, that's Doc. Just this. Hold on, please, Carrie. Hello. Carrie, just a yes. minute. Just a minute, please. I'll come to you. Doc, um, we, you can see a, a result of a question that we posed about do we second the setting up of a startup bank for the startup ecosystem? And our proposal is that we want to, I mean, take advantage of the petroleum holding fund or look at how best government can allow an increment of maybe 1% of the corporate tax of the oil companies to help us start a startup bank for, for the- But, but there's already, there are already different 
funding mechanisms available. So this is why I think part of the homework needs to be done really. Okay. Within the architecture of the space, yeah. what funding mechanisms are available? Yeah. Why have they worked or why haven't they worked? And what other mechanism can then be addressed? So is it just a question of starting a startup bank or the other um, processes um, or tools that can be used to at achieve the same end, you know, um, uh, objective. But this, it has to be driven and informed by the research and the data and what you found. So I think for me, it's difficult to say yes to it now without really understanding what the structural constraints and impediments are, and therefore what the solution ought to be if indeed it is uh, in the setting up of a startup bank. Great, 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 great. Now, Karaj, you wanted to say something. Yes, uh, I have two things to say. The first one is uh, in relation to uh, the approach that has been adopted so far. I am not well versed with the approach that has been adopted so far. I understand uh, some consultants have been uh, taxed to do this whole thing. But, uh, uh, and already there's a, a draft bill, if I understand. I, I stand being corrected. But uh, I see that we keep going back and forth as to what the approach is. And uh, I think that is where the problem is. It's, it looks like we don't have a certain approach or we don't have an approach as to how this whole thing should go. In that it looks like there are two groups now working on the same thing, if I do understand. But for me, what I think should have been done in the first place is uh, we should have had maybe uh, 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 done a DEX review. Once we do a DEX review, it gives us a comprehensive understanding of the issues that we want to address and how we want to address them. Then those issues will then be presented at a stakeholder consultation stage. At that stage, we get input from people as to how it should be done. Out of that consultation, we'll be able to draft a bill, a draft bill. Once that draft bill is being done, we present it to the working group. The working group looks at it, makes an input. Then we go back to the stakeholders for validation. Now, when that is done, we can then approach government, the uh, government, if it is through the Ministry of Finance or through the Ministry of Trade and Industry or whatever. Then at that stage, we can now get government's input as to the direction that government wants it to go, not entirely as government wants it, but like how it should be. So that at the end of the day, there'll be some sense of ownership in that the people on the ground will own the process, in that they'll be aware of its existence even at the end of the day. But if we just sit somewhere and do the whole thing, at the end, a lot of people will be there, they'll not be aware, and we have to spend so much money again to, uh, 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 sorry to say, ad like raise advocacy and all that. So for me, I want us to have an approach as to how we want this whole thing to be done. My second comment is in relation to we going to parliament at this stage. Not that I disagree with you, but uh, this is something I have done for several years. There's a stage at which you go to parliament. You see, there's a stage at which you go to parliament. If you go to parliament, it means that you have something ready and you want parliament to buy into it. Yeah. You want to convince parliament into it. At mm -hmm. this stage, the question is, do we have something ready? If we don't, what are we going to tell the speaker? Courage, courage. So, yeah. copying... Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, oh, sorry, yes, sir. Hold on, sorry, hold on. Please, please, hold on. I'll come to you. Courage. Um, yes. the white paper, is it wrong for us to publish a white paper and copy these people? You see, a white paper, a white paper is supposed, a white paper is based on some findings that you have done. Some mm -hmm. findings that you have done. The mm -hmm. question is, the findings that we are trying to make or bring parliament's attention to, what are the inputs? Do we have comprehensive inputs at this stage? 
do we have a consensus, a general consensus in terms of the working group, uh, uh, government agencies, and even stakeholders, entrepreneurs who are on the ground? Do we have that at this stage? In that we are then going to parliament to say, this is our, uh, uh, these are the issues that we want it to be addressed, but there's an ongoing process to draft a bill. And we want you to buy into that idea. Do we have that now? If we do, fine. If we don't, then let's see what, okay. how so we now, can address it. So on, on, on a condition that, Sheriff, let me come to you. I'm, I'll, I'll come to you right now. On the condition that we have these findings, we can publish our white paper, copy the media houses and mothers, copy the minority and majority leaders, as well as the Speaker of Parliament. Can we yes. do that? So, yeah, so just this, what I'll say is that mm. instead of doing a white paper, what we can do is to do a position paper. Okay. Because okay. A position paper, that is by way of advocacy. All right. That yeah. is by way of bringing the attention to what we intend doing or what we are doing mm. and how we want them to be mm. on board mm. and the role that we expect of them in championing the whole process. Mm. So mm. we can do that the media, parliament, and all other stakeholders. We can do a position paper on that. Great, great, great. So we should rather do a position paper instead of the white paper. I get you now. It's, yes. it's more clear now. Right. Sherry, if you wanted to make a point, just yes. one minute, uh, just one minute for us so that we will let the okay. other ones iron out. Give one minute to do. So Courage, uh, mm -hmm. let me just quickly let you know the the proposed uh, program you or the lineup how you explain it it is exactly what we are kind of going to do i only mentioned that we have the government because they are also a key player at the stage now what happened is that when uh, uh, i met or well, when we met uh, justice and his team already advocating for the ghana ghana to have a startup act we actually take it to a different level by inviting people like the Ghana, other organizations. I'm just kind of giving a brief history. But what happened is that uh, Hub Network already had uh, support to go around the whole country with their program dubbed 25 Days of Wow. And this program was to solicit input from startups and then the ecosystem players as to what they would want it to be captured in the Startup Act. On our side too, we were only working with institutions like uh, the uh, Justice and his team and other uh, startup organizations. And we were also soliciting input as to what their take is, what should be in the Ghana Startup Act. So that is what we wanted to start from. We wanted to get the basis that there's a need for the Ghana Startup Act and that all the key stakeholders are willing to have the Ghana Startup or are supporting it. Then we can start engaging, like you said, we can write to parliament or the position people to let them know that this is what we are going to do. Is Ghana parliament, will, be, will they be willing? Aside that we get to the government as well, will they be willing to push this? But what happened is that after the team got together, the Ghana Hub Network already have their inputs. And then what we, our committee also did. So the funding partner said that we should all give our input to the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the consultant for the consultant to start putting them together, whilst we now replan on our engagement. So this is the stage we are. The consultant is putting what the Hub Network have done, the other organizations have done. Instead of going to the whole country soliciting for fun, uh, in, input, we will not do that. Already it has been done. So the, the consultant is working on it to come up with a proposed bill based on the input we have given. Now, we are setting up a committee with the support of the funding partner to engage all of us. When I mean all of us, everybody here and the rest and the government. And then coming now to wait, the final draft, it will go to, I cannot say here because it's quite long. It has taken that to go to before we come up with the final draft. And in all this process, everybody is involved. The legal center, uh, the government, the politicians, everybody will be involved. They'll even be and the rest that will allow us be able to come up with the final document which the government will say that we are part of it the private sector owe it we drafted it but the government accepted it and their input were also captured so that is a process we are to start now and i just want the point to be clear all right yeah, Sheriff. Okay. yeah so okay. 
So thank you for the information. There are a lot of issues about what you've asked, you, you've just submitted, right? You will talk behind after the conference, right? Because there are a lot of issues. Mm. Those things you've stated, there are issues in connection with most the wild 2025. There are a lot of issues with it. Whether it was funded, whether it was effective, whether it was holistic, is something we need to question. Right. So it's not well, we, we are not going to drag it here. We are not going to drag it here. We are one now voice. Is to yes, we are okay. one voice. We want we want to achieve the same thing, right? We want to achieve yeah. the same thing. That is why we came to the chamber to propose that they should add their voice, and they did, they've yeah. taken it to another level. But we yeah. have also fake information that some of the things you are mentioning in terms of wild 2025 wasn't holistic, wasn't funded, it was, has no backing, they are doing their own thing, right? I know the person behind that, right? So we will talk. We don't need to, as we said, we have come to a conclusion that we have to be one. We are finding an inter, interlacing landing page so that we all be on the same page. Good, you've done a lot of work with the chamber. We appreciate that. We also want to be part of what you are doing so that you also be part of what we are also we are championing for. At the end of the day, we will be on the same vehicle driving to the same ultimate goal. Right. So we will talk more be after this, this, this discussion. Now, let me quickly pick um, Farouk, your hands are up. I wanted to talk to Mame, but it looks like Mame is tired. So Farouk, uh, can you make your last submission so we can? No, I think I think um, courage courage made a very important mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. point that um, it has moved from a white paper to a position paper, yeah. which I think you know it puts us in a very safe space, you know, like not getting ahead of yourself or not being informed of what Parliament is already doing or government stands on or the whole startup ecosystem. Um, anytime Sharif speaks, I, I, it, 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 it takes me to the point that a white paper is premature, you know, so a position paper is fine. And I think that's, that's the, you know, I'm, for me particularly, I'm very excited about this discourse because um, it's brought a lot of clarity. I've been extremely informed before this forum. I didn't know what has happened. I'm hearing, wow, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, names is popping up so there's been some considerable attempts efforts you know towards the same goal and in the same spirit i mean the collectiveness you know the collectiveness sharing information and working with stakeholders is is is, is a is a stakeholder approach that we need and i'm sure after this forum we would we would we would maintain this vehicle we all stay in the vehicle keep the conversation very fluid so that yes, position paper doesn't hurt anybody or any effort that has been done. It, it goes a long way to re-echo the efforts. Um, somebody is going to hear about it, this, you know, startup intention for the first time. Once we get media to throw in some light, we go, we present our position paper. So um, the cohesion, the cohesion is very, very important. Let's speak with one voice. I think, and I also have to commend Justice. You did something very, very humbling when Courage made a submission that, look, it's not a white paper. I mean, you showed leadership. You quickly admitted and said, okay, great. I think then it's a position paper that we have to submit. So um, that's, that's my take. And I think it's been very helpful. Favor, do you want to make a submission? Is favor Me? on? Favor. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. We want we want to hear your voice. We want you to talk. What what are your concluding oh. submission? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So I've learned a lot today. Actually, I didn't know really. I didn't know much, and so today I came in just to um, get more information to actually help me um, make some inputs when it comes to the Startup Act. So it's been informative and educative. Great. Yeah, that's Great. all I would say. Great. Thanks for joining. Thank you, too. Doc, Doc, we need a conclusion statement from you. Doc Tatio. I'm, I'm here. Great. 
Sorry, I missed I missed what you said. Please share. We need your final submission. Uh so I mean I I think for me just listening to everyone speak has been quite good. Um and whether white opposition paper we need to canvas for something. So I suppose really the question is what are the action points that you're taking going forward as, as a result of this meeting and who is doing what to get you know the outcomes that you're you're looking for great 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 and um i believe that you we will need your input anytime you call you you'll be available for us right oh i'm i'm around certainly happy to to guide i mean I'm, the issue of entrepreneurship and startups is something I'm particularly passionate about. Um, and um, in any way, shape or form that I can help, especially from the policy angle, because that's what I do. Um, a lot of my consultancy work in, I, I am more than happy to support um, the, um, the, the, the organizations, you know, um, champion that cause. So yes, great. do count on my availability. Great, great. Thank you, Doc. Mr. Isaac, um, we need your your last statement. Okay, um, I want to say that this is this is a brilliant idea. That is, this is a very fantastic meeting, and it's good. Different ideas are coming on board as to know our position now. Uh, my last word that I would say that there should be a quick engagement with the with Sharif and the team, as well as Justice and the team as well, so that. Um, we, we, we all know where we stand and we all know how collectively we can be together to move forward. I, I personally was part of one of the meetings they had. That was uh, last year, December. We had a GIMPA, which was a very solid, detailed engagement. And um, I, 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 I will hope that these two people, we will quickly come together. In as much as the chamber is taking in on a very faster speed, this team will come together and then um, collectively bring the minds together for us to do because when we win it's for the country and it's not about uh, we, we should also grow much about from the angle that people will say or somebody will say okay I championed it I did I did that but the most important thing is the legacy we all come together to leave on this on, on to this country though the generations that will come after us are going to also live on and build upon to make this country a better place it might not benefit us, our companies today, but it will benefit our sons and our brothers who are from the colleges, from the universities who are coming. And so we should continue to have that united front to go wherever we have been to. Let's all step our feet there and support, bring the ideas, bring the best mind, bring the best human resources together. And then we can all go. I'm into the media. I'm into entertainment sector. I invest in music streaming and we need this. Because there are a lot of people who want to start up record labels. They want to, people want to stop a lot of investment stuff from there. We need it. So wherever it is coming from, we want to be in a position to support in aspect whatever we want to do. And we will also use our media guys, our entertainment team, to also champion this and push it. One is going to the media for the trends and everything to create awareness. So let's right. continue to come right. together. Right. Wherever the, uh, the, the chamber has got into, let's step our feet there and put on the effort and the load that we also have, add it up, and then we can continue to do the draft, and then we can make the necessary noise around it. And we are into support. This is a great thing. Thank you. Great, great, great. Um, Albert, we've, we've not been hearing from you. Uh -huh. Well, uh, thank you very much, and thank all of you. I want to put my concluding statement uh, in this context of the African pre-paid continental area that at the end of it all, what we are looking out for is to be able to compete first of all on the continent of Africa and also try to compete globally. So uh, despite everything, we want to see a, a startup act for Ghana. So it's a good point. You have done great. And uh, I think that with the sheriff coming in, we are going to you know, put ourselves together and make sure that everything that has to be contributed to make sure that the art comes to life is done so that eventually the aim is uh, achieved. All right. Thank you. Very great, much. great. Sheriff, you know, Sheriff, I'm the, I'm the communication director for Sheriff. Do you know that? 
Sherry, your, <laughs> <laughs> your last statement. Your last statement. Is Sherry Vaughn. Thank you. <laughs> I'm your communication director. Do you know that? Or have you forgotten? Communication director, really. <laughs> have you forgotten? Uh, how can I forget? <laughs> The board, anyway, the, board, so, the board of the chamber needs to sit down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Um, um, uh, I will say that this is a, a headway, and thank you to Justice and the team for not giving up in this call. I can boldly say that it was true justice that we felt the need to take this uh, Startup Act far, and that was when he joined the chamber. And I, I believe that we need people like him with this spirit in our country. And when we actually take it up, um, I heard a lot of people keep saying the chamber. The issue is that it is not the chamber. Now, it, it lies in the hands of the various startup organizations in Ghana, which I mentioned some of them. We are only part. We also play our part anyway. And uh, maybe that is why a lot of uh, lapses has been here with respect to information. But I think that Let's keep the spirit going. This is for uh, this is a national agenda. You and I all want the startup act to be there because we want it to benefit ourselves and others and those who are here to come. So I am all open and I know my team, which justice is part, uh, just that a lot of communication has to be done. We are also open to support any uh, way that the Ghana startup act will come to friction. So thank you. Thank you. You should be a politician. You should go and run for some presidential. Candidate Chabu. Um, well, I mean, next, next four years, we Farouk. will run for president. Farouk will go. Farouk will no. go. <laughs> and that is important. Oh. Kotoka, Please. your last statement. Delali. All right. Then, Samuel. Samuel, are you there? Yes. Um, okay. Before you yes, talk, I'm here. Yeah, before you I'm talk, here. Samuel is actually um, our research director for AFED, right? So we need your last um, statement. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> justice. Okay. Thank you for the intro as well. Um, well, you know, you as you mentioned, research director, but then I'm interested more in the research stuff in mm -hmm. here. And um, I think Karis made a very good submission with the um, outline of things that needs to be done before we move into actually drafting the act, um, which I, I actually um, check all the boxes that uh, he, he actually mentioned. So um, from the background research to the final stage of drafting the report, I really like it. And his submission regarding the um, uh, position paper instead of a white paper, which I really, really agree with that. Um, However, what I want to add is that it is important that uh, once this um, position paper is written, we all have an input in there, and then we all come together again to review the position paper before um, we send it to the media houses and to the various outlets that we are proposing to send this into. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm glad that also Dr. Theophilus um, has agreed to you know, um, review this and then also add his uh, comment as well yeah. to it. So I, I, um, I would like to say thank you to him for his commitment um, yeah. right here. And then the final one that we want to conclude with is um, that we should still keep the, the, the unity or the spirit of uh, togetherness in, in this course. You know, it's a good course and we all want our names on it regardless. And then I would understand why one organization will want to take the, um, a foot forward and then, you know, um, leave another organization behind. But then um, as we've agreed here, uh, we should all have a unified effort. As as um, AFID, I think we are um, ready to to join any organization, especially uh, the chamber that Sheriff um, and then the work that Sheriff is also doing in that regard. And uh, any invitation we will we'll, we'll gladly um, accept in order to contribute any way that we can. So thank you very much all for 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 participating in our event and then for your fruitful. Uh, discussion that you've, you've 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 provided. Thank you. Great, 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 great. Thank you, everybody. Farouk, Delali, are you ready to talk? Okay, Delali is banking. So thank you, Doc. Doc, thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Sheriff. Thank you, Favor. Thank you, Samuel, Isaac. Thank you. We'll talk more. And um, 
the rest of who joined us and left us later, thank you, everybody. Um, you hear from us via an email when we are ready to take your, your, your maybe suggestion when the position draft is ready. All right, thank you very much. Thank you too, Justice. Yeah.